Darius, 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 Darius. You got it. Darius, not Dar- not Darius. You're right, Darius. Darius. That's right. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You said so. You said you knew Chef George, right? Oh yeah. 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 How'd y'all meet? How'd y'all get into contact? Gosh, it was, uh, it was a heck of a long time ago. It was. I think he was ten, eleven. I was twelve or thirteen. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Like twenty years. Yeah. Wow. He had some collection of knives, and he opened up. He's like, "Here, look at this knife." <laughs> like, Where were we all at? So we knew he was going to be a. We knew he was going to be a chef. Just he had bigger knives than the chef that I actually have these days. <laughs> mm, that's crazy. Just like a knife connoisseur, he just really liked knives. No, dude, the kid, kid was into everything like that. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We had a good t- good time. Nice. Yeah, we met at a retreat center out in California. Really? And we were at like a summer camp type thing, and our families had both gone at the same time, and that was the rest is history. That's crazy. That's destiny. The rest is history. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Man. Now we're now we're practically neighbors. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I, uh, we have a similar relationship. Just having known each other since childhood, like ran into each other, became friends, best friends, and then just you know you get lucky like that sometimes. You meet somebody, it's like just with you for your life. Hey, man. Good person, right, right time. Everything happens for a reason. Right. It's awesome. Don't know what that reason is, but <laughs> Hope I mean, I'm here. I still don't know why I'm here. Why, why am I here? Again? You'll find out. Later. That's the big. That's the big question. <laughs> We're here today to bring some spotlight to not only a local business owner, but a consultant, entrepreneur, family man. Uh, he's been in and out of the real estate market. Knows it from top to bottom. Production company, marketing. This guy is a, a renaissance man is an understatement. Um, Darius, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, seriously. You guys are making me sound cool, though. <laughs> you <laughs> are cool, Definitely not man. cool. And with the intro, baby. Come on, now. <laughs> yeah, you're awesome, man. It's yeah, really nice well, to get to know it. you. Yeah, so you own... Thanks for having uh, me. I guess we have a, a box. If you can't, if you're just watching, you're not going to see it. But we have a box in the, middle of a, in the middle of a table here. And what is in that box and where is it from, Mr. Darius? Well, it looks like a pizza box. <laughs> yes. So it's, uh, suffice it to say there should be pizza in there. We're Although now that now that, that you're holding it like that, <laughs> I'm a little sorry, worried. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> is it cake? Is it cake? It's cake. It's actually cake. So I have uh, Slice Street Pizza in Dripping Springs, Texas. Dripping Springs. What's it called again? Oh, yeah, oh, Slice Street oh Pizza. Sliced. Street yeah, look at that. Pizza. Chicken Bacon Ranch. Okay. And off off uh, off camera, off mic, we were talking about how I just somehow guessed that you guys were gonna like Chicken Bacon Ranch. I don't know how. Dude, I don't know how to. Well, it's definitely my our number one subway order for sure is chicken bacon ranch. So it's a heater. But personally, the other night I was trying to have healthy chicken, and it was I was gonna end up eating, and then my girlfriend was gonna make her daughter food, and then she was going to probably not eat maybe snacks on this on that, and I was just kind of like you know not stressed out per se. But can you do that again? Like kind of not eat maybe. Snacks? Maybe I was gonna have some. Uh, I don't know, club soda. I'm like club soda. <laughs> There's no calories. Uh, but where what ended up happening is I was a little bit frustrated and I was just like, okay, look, no, hold on. We, we're going to have dinner. We're going to eat dinner together. It's sun, It's like, yeah, I think it was Sunday night, Monday night, Sunday night. I'm like, we need to, I don't want her just eating whatever she's going to eat and then you're maybe not going to eat. It's like, I, we're going to sit down and eat together. So I don't want to eat this food even though I'm like starving. I was like, let's just order a pizza. It'll be ready in 10 minutes. I'll go get the pizza. I'll come back. And then we'll say we're having dinner and then we'll all sit down and eat dinner together. Cause I feel like that's an important thing to, for us to do as a family. And then she was kind of like, okay, like I agree, which normally doesn't happen. So I feel like I was onto something. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, I went to go get the pizza, but the problem with the pizza is I want a chicken so bad. I was trying to eat healthy. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to eat I had a slice of pizza earlier this week that was loaded with salami and pepperoni and all the all the bad stuff. And I was like, let me just order a chicken pizza. And you guys can get a pepperoni pizza. And then I had some chicken pizza and I was like, this is incredible. I'm so into this. This is where I'm I'm living for this chicken pizza. And so uh, then you walked in with a chicken pizza and I was like, what the hell is going on? Everything happens for a reason. Tapped into it, dude. <laughs> Crazy. Well, I mean, that's. On that on that vein of consciousness, that's kind of why we we put the pizzeria together the way we did, right? I got three little kids, I got fourth on the way, and you know I'm, I knew I was going to be bringing food home on a regular basis. I didn't want to bring home garbage. Nice, dude. So we tried really hard to put together a product that was, you know, like why why does fine dining get to have all the fun? Why do they have to? They're the doing the fire the farm to table. They're the doing the you know. Everything they sell has a selling yeah. point. Yeah. So I'm like, well, why can't we do the same thing? So we went and found a local mill in uh, Dripping Springs called Barton Springs Mill. And so we use their flour in our flour mix. It, the entire mix is non-GMO. Um, even part of it's organic. 
Uh, we use real olive oil. Uh, on our Detroit pizzas, we use real butter. I don't use MSG on anything. I avoid seed oils. Like I'm like, if we're going to do this, let's do it right, guys. So we're having fun. And so in that pizza, you've got quality ingredients top to top to top to bottom. So man, I'm very excited. But not like just, you know, everybody says quality ingredients. I feel like it's such a freaking, you know, yeah, who doesn't cliche. say that? Yeah, dude, we got quality, we got quality. Like, I think Jack in the Box has quality ingredients. Well, there's another Papa something that does it too and it's like, come on guys. Yeah. All right, what's what's quality to you? And you literally know probably where their quality's coming from. Well, yeah. Yeah. I've been in those kitchens. I want to not pause for a second, but is it Yeah. So you make your own fat ice. Yeah, I guess we're gonna just jump How right so? into it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I got these little this little cooler, like this big, kind of like an old school lunchbox. And you fill it with water most of the way, three quarters of the way. And you rip off the top. So basically it's an insulated, you know, thing. You put it in the freezer, like get a deep freezer, you know, make room in your in your freezer. And it because it's insulated, it freezes from the top down. It doesn't matter what kind of water you're using. When that happens, you're pushing the imp- impurities and the air down to the bottom of the of the container. Mm-hmm. So at the bottom, never really freezes unless you leave it in for like six, seven days, whatever. I mean, maybe less than that, but whatever. You long time, uh, long time. After after one to two days max, you've got about this much of frozen chunk in that you know pail, and then you flip it out. Whoops. Flip it out, drop it out onto your your cutting surface or whatever, and you use a a knife just to kind of go back and forth, like just a normal knife, not a serrated knife or anything like that. And all you're doing is you're just using the friction to kind of create like a, an indent. And you do that on all four sides. And then you take a little mallet and you tap on it, and it just sends a straight line right through, like cuts perfectly. You don't sit there and try to hack at it. Don't sit there and try to cut it. It comes out crystal clear. There's still huh. water at the bottom. It comes out crystal clear. And then you stick that in the freezer, in a Ziploc. Got all the ice in the world. Chilling. Takes some time. Most people don't want to do it. But nerd, you know, food nerds like me <laughs> will try just about anything once or Dude, here's what times. I'm thinking is that we, Go for it. we 3D print people's logos, drop it right on top towards the end of the – oh, it goes from top bottom. So I don't know. So they've already got you taken care of. In fact, next food show, I should just invite you guys to come along. A lot of these food shows, they show up with these guys that have the stamps. Really? And the stamp, all it is, is a like a die cast stamp. And the stamp just sits right on top of that cube. So you get that cube. You can buy it. You can make it, whatever. And you just leave it on there. And then just the heat and the pressure transfers a little indent into the ice. Mm-hmm. And so when you drop that into the into the glass, you can see the logo. Oh, Dude, man, that's pretty cool. That's a cool gift. That's a cool thing to have in your. That's that's dope to have a custom big ice, big ice block at your crib. I think that's one of the reasons to go out to a nice place. Just you, to have big ice. It's cool <laughs> for the old fashioned. Uh, I don't disagree. Nice. They charge like two or three dollars <laughs> a, a ice cube. In many of these places. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not to you, the consumer. I mean, they they're adding it into the drink. You don't realize you're paying for it. But like when you get a seventeen dollar cocktail, a lot of the times you're paying for that an ice cube. The glassware, the ice cube. Yeah. The smile from the bartender. Yep. <laughs> it's all built in. They got a tip on and top. Afterwards. Yeah. They got a tip on top. Facts. The level of service that people give at those places, sometimes it's phenomenal, though. Like, to some degree worth. The presentation is part of the product, you know? They give an incredible presentation. That's, like, you appreciate it. That's what you're there for. Cirque du Soleil does that. Like, That's why we try really hard not to shake up the pizza like you did. When you... <laughs> <laughs> Just for display purposes. Is it a tie? <laughs> Yeah, no, but this pizza looks phenomenal. I really am excited to eat it. Yeah, we can bring it back to that before our technical difficulties. But so you said, or you're talking about, I guess, in- ingredients and just culinary background. So how'd you get into the the pizza game? I mean, we, this is a three hour podcast. How yeah. Long <laughs> yeah, you said that the initial idea was about your kids and that you wanted to, I guess, open up a food business, but then also logistically work it well into your life. I mean, I kind of. Yeah, it goes. It goes back to. You know, it goes back to my my roots, um, being Greek, uh, being Greek and Persian, right? Two two ethnic backgrounds that are super into food and hospi- hospitality. Like, there's no you don't go to a Greek's house, you don't go to a Persian's house, and not get force fed some form of food or another. Mm-hmm. I'm not hungry. That's okay. You're still gonna eat. <laughs> you can taste it. I didn't ask yeah. if you were hungry. Yeah. <laughs> like they look at me like, oh, you're just skin and bones. Like, no. Nah. <laughs> I mean, yes, there's skin and bones, but there's a lot of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. But uh no, I mean like 
growing up in that in that world, like the only way to hang out with my grandfather was to go to the restaurant. Really? And so we did. I, wor- I worked every job, you know, in the restaurant as a kid, pretty much. And uh, I mean, back in the old days where, you know, no one cared about rules and regulations. Like they had a little kid, you know, delivering a drink to a table. <laughs> Imagine the tips that you get, right? Like, um, like hey, I'm, I made, I didn't make the drink, but here I'm serving you the drink. Yeah. The cute so, factor. I mean, I, I, at a point in time, I was cute. So they tell me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, kind of grew up in that. My dad was a mortgage broker. So kind of, you know, headed that direction without really realizing it. I, for a while, wanted to study theology. So I went down a completely different road, lived in Greece for a little bit. And uh, and then found myself kind of headed back towards the family business. I tried one last chance to escape, and I started an ad agency. And my first customer was my father in the mortgage business. And I'm wow. like, all right, we're gonna do we're gonna do all the ad buys, and it had a had a blast. I mean, traveled the world, you know, took on customers, had fun. Uh, every our our customers seemed to be in like in in finance, real estate, and food, mainly because you know. When you're starting out, you're not making very much money. So you find a restaurant that you can do something for and they end up feeding you if they don't pay you. There you right. go. So That'll great. work. Win-win. It was, it was great. That'll work. But uh, anyways, ended up going into the mortgage business, did that for a long time with my with my family. And then uh, I said I was gonna I was gonna do something in food, ended up working, you know, working the line like a, a line cook job for a little bit, worked as a server for a little bit. Uh, rewrote menus, did some some restaurant consulting, you know, here and there. Bought a food truck. George and I did some catering together, um, and then I just kind of kept threatening. I'm gonna I'm gonna start a restaurant. I'm gonna start a restaurant. Start a restaurant. And then we got together and uh, with a couple of partners started Slice Street Pizza, and and the idea was to try to mimic what some of these franchises were doing, and then it just kind of morphed into something more than that. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to. Make a pizza that I don't want to eat. Of course, yeah. True. So there's true. so many of these other places that maybe the first bite you've you've noticed this before. Like, the first bite you have is is pretty good. Like it's salt, it's fat, it's like what it's carbs. Like what what could be wrong? Mm-hmm. It's so wrong. It's right. Yeah. But then by the time you get the second, the third, and the last bite, it's never as good as the first. There's a nice about like pizza in general. I'm talking about most fast food. Okay. And I'm talking about most food in general. Got it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, think about that. You go to some even nice restaurants and your first bite's great because there's the hype. You're hungry. You're hungry. You know, you've gone through the whole waiting. They serve mm. you and they sit down. They, like the napkin, like everything is, you know, it's all a, a show in a way. Right? It is. A presentation. 100%. So is the last bite as good as the first all the time? All the time? No. Probably I guess, never or very seldom. <laughs> I can think of a couple. I'm an optimist, so I, 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 I'm always thinking about like positive uh, responses to an argument. So like for just some pushback, right? Pizza, for instance, uh, I'm, a, I'm a New York style pizza eater. My mom's family is from the East Coast, so I really like to fold it up. Mm-hmm. And then for me, the first bite's not my favorite bite because it's like not – it's not the best bite. I gotta, I gotta carve out the best bite. Yeah, sure. And, but then sure. that bite right there, once I've bitten off the edge of the pizza and I've got a full mouthful of what this pizza is about, that's hitting. But I guess that you, that could qualify mm. as the first true bite. Well, okay, sure. But then you can go into all sorts of different variations, right? So me, a hot slice of pizza, and then you roll it up, and now you have the, in my Whoa. opinion, the best bite because now <laughs> you're getting the crunch of the crust. Oh shit! And the hot gooey cheese. All together, instead of leaving the bone for the end. Now, we like to tell everybody to trust the crust because the crust is so fantastic, and that crunch of the crust is great. So we don't—I don't want you to throw the crust away. You probably won't because it's that good. Crisp, don't lie. Mm. Well, yeah, exactly. But I mean, at the end of the day, first bite versus the last bite, right? You you go to get a Pizza Hut, you go to get one of these, you know, yeah. chains, and you're like, "This was good," and then you're like, "I don't really want any anymore." Yeah. <laughs> I did the same thing when I had the pizza I was telling you about earlier this week. The I, idea of getting it is always – it's amazing. That's marketing. It's psychological. Yeah. It's just – generally, it's 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 life, right? You're going to pay this and you're going to get that and you're like, okay, cool, and it's cheap and uh. – <laughs> Dude, I was, well, I was paying for the moment. I was paying for – 
to yes. s- and then yeah, the family dinner. My girlfriend's daughter ran over and went, "It's pizza time!" Yeah, she's like three years old. I don't yeah. know where she got that from. Yeah. That shit was hilarious. You know what I'm saying? It was literally <laughs> the twelve dollars was worth just like sitting down for a second with everybody. Sure. Sure. Which is, if you can sell that to people, that's crazy. That's way more than pizza. Okay, well, so how how nerdy mathematical can we get? I mean, let me show you. Please go off. Mm-hmm. Um, 3.141592, and it just keeps going and going. I mean, this is, we're talking about a mathematical expression. It's an infinite, right? It's a circle. It never ends. What is more unifying than that? Pi? <laughs> Oh, that is pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying well, you lost me. You lost me. You lost me. You lost me. I, want, I wanted that to land so bad, but but it, no. I mean, like you, you sit around a you sit around a round circle, right? You sit around a pizza. It's it's fantastic. Obviously, pizza ends at some point in time. Yeah. Then you get the one guy who thinks he can have 14 slices, and there's none for everybody else. But at the end of the day, you're sitting around something. You're you're hanging out together. It's always there. It is. All of our moments are around food. If you look at at society, even in America, where food is less important than in other cultures, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Everything is is around food. Everything's around food. Go out on a date, you're usually going to get something to eat. Go to your your favorite ballpark or your favorite you know game, you're going to get something to eat. You go out after a sports thing, you go out after school, you hang out with your butt, you're going to get something to eat. Huge socializer. Huge socializer. Big time. Right. Big time. We all got to right. eat. We all got to eat. We all got to eat. Some of us eat more than others. But Everybody's got to eat, at baby. The, at the end of the day, like, it's 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 there and it's going to be tagged with a memory. Yes. Right? So that pizza that you got, for me, it was Friday night pizza night growing up with the with the family. Yeah. Mom would throw out a big white sheet on the on the floor move the furniture out of the way it was the couch in the back where the adults sat mom and dad were on the couch and kids were on the white you know sheet on the mm. floor so if we drop something who cares it was costco <laughs> they got some bomb pizza we go it's huge costco every once in a while <laughs> gas, and i don't dude. think we were we were i guess we were good enough kids that we didn't revolt but we probably wanted to Every once in a while, I was like Papa Murphy's. Like, what? What is this? And but it was Costco Papa all the Murphy's. time. That's take home and bake. Take- right? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we did that. Yeah, and then you end up like over doctoring it. Like, I'm gonna put a regular one. I'm gonna put this on. Like, before you know, it's like it's not even a pizza anymore. It's yeah, just like the sandwich or something. Yeah. It's a board of ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> My stepdad actually, his parents own like a few different, like maybe seven or eight Papa Papa John's. Okay. In New Jersey, and so he grew up working in pizza shops all the time. And then him and my mom got together when I was 10. So from that point, we were having take-home pizza, making pizza at home. Nothing crazy, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like, it's a, it's easy. It's solid. It's such a staple for a family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's nice I mean, on the it's budget. It's a whole food pyramid on, on, on a plate. Yeah. Plus yeah. it's pizza, Everything. man. That shit. Everyone's happy to eat pizza, like you said. You remember Blockbuster? Yeah. Yeah, we used to get Blockbuster on Friday and have a pizza on Friday. And it was just like all of those memories. Killer. So That's now your you're, life. you're doing the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. What um, what about you, Justin? Do you have good pizza memories? Pizza memories? I don't think we really had like a ritual for it, really, like growing up. But it was it's definitely always a thing, you know. Every, yeah. every, all the kids eat pizza. <laughs> Everyone eats pizza. I have pizza at school. But C-C's you have that one in ranch, CC's buffet. Yeah, you have that one <laughs> friend, or I mean, at this point, acquaintance that are like, I don't really like pizza. You're like, Dude, I'm like kind none? of none. What? None what of them. So many. What is, what is wrong with this? Per- There's, I can't. I can't trust them anymore. Yeah, you, you lost. You lost some judgment. Check. What are we talking about? It's you, more nuanced. Than you that. haven't found a pizza that you liked yet. Well, there's, there's so no, many. The, the other comment is there's no such thing as a bad pizza. There you go. And other end of the spectrum. I would say that I would have agreed with that statement prior to opening a pizzeria Mm -hmm. and recognizing (laughs) that once you've tried so many different pizzas you get to that point you hit the wall and you're like yeah that's i'm just not i'm not gonna eat that it's not for me (laughs) it's not yet dude you are your pizza snob (laughs) i've had a good pizza now i don't really want to go down the dark you know deep road of well but if you're really drunk late night (laughs) that's the thing the gut sponge (laughs) how hungry are you (laughs) yeah pizzas be hitting when you're drunk for sure as well if you're yeah Right, <laughs> perfect thing to end a drink at and parties, it's, and it's so easy, it's portable, it's, it feeds the multitude. It's a good yeah. time, yeah. It's a great time. What's the, I guess, yeah, what do you, as far as maybe chains or not chains, just any pizza store or operation, like what do you get? Where are you like, who are you trying to grab inspiration from as far as pizza, pizza makers in the game? Good question. Um, so for me, it was kind of like, all right, how, how do we. How do we find the balance between the ubiquitous everywhere pizza Americana? You can get it, you know, 
in every town, every zip code, everywhere. Mm. And that phenomenal pizza that you had that one time, you know, it was maybe more artisanal or maybe it was more like a pizza parlor or maybe whatever. Um, so it's like there's a couple places across the nation, I think, that, that you know, are just super well known for pizza. Um, you've got the New York institutions and, you know, the minute you bring up anything in New York, it's like, well, that's not pizza. That's not pizza. Like, all right. So one thing about New York pizza is that New York pizza to somebody who lives on, you know, this street and that street is completely different from somebody who lives on that street and the other street because oh, yeah. everybody does it just a little, they have their own little spin on it. It's such a melting pot too. Totally. Yeah. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like this Italian product, right? That, that comes over and becomes Americanized and, you know, uh, you got you got the Chris Biancos of the world and the Tony Gimignanis of the world. These guys are like, you know, um, uh, massive role models in the pizza industry, titans in the pizza industry that have more artisanal concepts. And, you know, you go there and, and you know, they're putting it in a 90 degree. Have you heard of Doe's here in San Antonio? Doe's. Is it Doe's the one downtown? Pizzeria? Yeah, it's uh, right by North Star Mall. Oh, okay, no. I'm going to say, I think I'm, I've seen their sign. I go over to the North Star area a lot. Yeah. There's a gym over there. So they got that, like, Pizza Napolitana, okay. right? Uh, certified by the Italian government. Like, you know, what? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, pizza's a big deal. They got a certificate from they got a, Italy? Yeah. Yeah, they're like a... They're, I don't what is that? What they they have a mother them. dough that's truly from... No, it's like they follow every single rule of what it is to have pizza, re- p- pizza Napolitana from that region of Napoli and, you know, whatever. They're importing mm. ingredients? Is that uh, part of the They're using a certain flour with a certain water certain distributor, that kind of stuff. Oh, a wow. certain water percentage, a certain fermentation model. That's what I'm saying. Is it like a qualifier for how you prepare the food? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So anybody could prepare the food through that model yep. and get qualified? Yeah. yeah, in theory. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, it's, I mean you talk about it's a lot, snobby. Though. That's the... That's the that's it. <laughs> it's like making it's like got a, it, got it, got it. it's like yeah. champagne, or like wine production. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like in order to be called champagne, it's like it has to be very specific in the region yeah, of France. Right. You know, <laughs> this yeah. method. This, this is sparkling wine. Right. This is a round bread device. That's crazy, right? Yeah. What the hell? This so there's, there's like a I guess Italy's the the the, the holder of those certificates to be like well, this they, is legit pizza. Sure. But I mean, is that really true? Is that what right. people is that what people you know follow? No, no absolutely no. not. There are a certain segment of the population that's a big deal to them. You know, I, I think I've gone through the ups and the downs. Like sometimes I'm like, yeah, I want that thing. That's but then I went to Italy and I I went and had and I was like, yeah, okay, it's even different. Even if you get this certification, having it in Italy is still different than having it here. Mm-hmm. Now, part of that is a psychological aspect of it, the sights and the sounds and the smells and, you know, what have you been doing and the memories that are attached with it. And, you know, there's hype, you know, waiting to get into the, you know, Pizzeria San Michele and you're like, oh, wow, I'm finally here. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But anyways. That's awesome. So, so you have some inspiration from Italy as well? or It's it's all over. I mean, it's all, you've got, mm. you got Italian producers, you've got American producers, you've got the chains that do it really well. I mean, you've, You've got to look at Domino's. Like, they're not even a pizzeria anymore. And I'm not saying that negatively. They're a tech company. Hmm. How so? I mean, they've they've got the pizza tracker. They've got the waypoint locator. They've got, you know, they're going to they're gonna tell you uh, where you can meet them on the side of a street in a park, wherever, and pick up your pizza. I mean, like, it's, their app is, is you know, you can't, I can't, I can't compete with that. Mm. No way. No independent can compete with that. The only thing we can compete on is flavor profile, quality of ingredients. You know, yeah, our not... dough is 48 hour cold fermented. Theirs is, you know, made that morning, you know, or 12 hours, whatever. They've got stabilizers. It comes out perfect every time. Mine got little bubbles here and there. Yeah. Huh. Well, so, more human touch. Yeah. yeah. It's a different demographic, though. Someone's going for ease or like price point. If that's what they're looking to consume their food like they're going to pay money to get food and they're looking for like those things you, you're not really competing to take that client away from them or that that customer you know like if you want people that want pizza that tastes delicious or something new or something with the ingredients like that you're talking about being like local and mm-hmm. organic and stuff like that 
you can take those customers away from other people, but it's weird because they're like more globalized and more commercialized. You're not competing for the same customers. No. And learning that, like going through that experience and learning that lesson, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be everybody's Domino's order. I'm not going to be every pizza, but pizza hut order. I also don't think I'm going to beat everybody else's favorite pizza place because everybody is going to have their own favorite pizza place. Yeah. Now we're, we're blessed that we are in that kind of category where people try it once and it's very rare we hear anything negative about it. But at the end of the day, most towns have something like one pizzeria per 2,000, 2,500 pizza people. That's kind of roughly the pizza math, you know, when you're figuring mm-hmm. out, am I going to open up a shop here? Um, we've got like eight or nine in Dripping Springs. Um, the math kind of checks out, about 30-something thousand people there. Um but there's people you're going to go down to the other pizza place and people are like, yeah, hey, hey, don't I see you at my shop? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be offended that they're like, go, go to the other local guy. That's great. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, it doesn't bother me at all because we have our, our core group of, of regulars that are going to continue to come back. We got a core group of new folks coming through the door, checking us out online or yeah. whatever. And we're going to, we're not going to be everybody's slice, but we're most people's slice. Yeah. I think you can compete for a big market. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Sure. Which is for awesome. Sure. It's just weird that like Walmart and Domino's, those like people that have been in the industry that they're in for as like almost as long as the industry's been there, they have this different kind of reach. They're able to push, you know, hundreds of thousands into millions because of their infrastructure, because they have technology that costs so much. I mean, you can't get the investors that they can get because it's hard to get the credit that they can get. They oh, can so pretty much have anything economies, they want. Economies of scale. Right. right. Like a, a pizzeria in and of itself or or just you know, use this to compare against any business, really, but specifically in food. Mm-hmm. That one location costs a lot, right? Your cost on of goods, your cost of goods sold are higher. Period. End of story on your your one location operation. You add the second location, and some of those costs are getting shared. Not to mention, you start being able to buy more volume, and then you get a little bit better deal, mm-hmm. right? Right. Then you get the third. It's usually the inflection point is about three to four locations, where all of a sudden it's like. Okay, now we can start making money. Really? Because now we've got, you know, a general manager split between multiple locations. So there's one salary. Maybe it's a higher salary, but it's one salary as opposed to yeah. three separate salaries, right? Yeah. You know, we, we're buying these boxes. We're getting these boxes by the case load. Now we're getting the boxes by the pallet load. P- pretty soon you're getting the boxes by the container load. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, okay. Scalability oh, go, ease. Yeah, I'm going to go straight to the, to the you know, I'm not going to skip the distributor. I'm going to go straight to the manufacturer. Yeah. Because, yeah, because yeah, you can typically at that point, you need to be buying a certain amount to so even have that conversation. Makes right. sense for that person. Right. So yeah. now, you know, I do the deliveries from one location of, all right, here's your boxes for the week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Same thing. We're going to make the dough in one location. Now I'm going to send a truck out to the different locations. So that's where we obviously, we're, we're eight, nine months in. So we've got to set our sights on that. Of course. But we're not there yet. And then... W- what do you, how, how does the business growth look once you get to that three to fourth location? Do you start thinking about 10 to 50 locations? What's your move there? I mean, it, it just, it, everything depends. Everything depends, right? It depends on what's the economy doing at the time. What are interest rates at the time? Where can that money be invested elsewhere? And, and what is it doing for you at the time? It's, it's all very much, you know, time and place centric. Uh, but the goal is is definitely growth. You want to grow big enough to where you get the attention of a hedge fund. You get the attention of a big portfolio. They want to come and and pick you up, you know. And then at that point, oh, do you want to sell? Maybe you want to keep going. Dude. And mm. uh, and so that's you know there's 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 a lot there's a lot to go. You, you can't you can you can set your sights over there, but you have to focus on on where you're at right now. And for us right now, it's we have bet the farm on staff, right? We've bet the farm on people doing their job properly. It's hmm. scary. Yeah. Like right? What do you mean? Or like well, hiring you, people in general? Yeah. Well, hiring people, you guys can run this podcast, right? You can run your oper- operation, just the two of you. So the, the the risk there, the variable there is much lower, right? 100%. For me, it's like, okay, if, well, if employee A doesn't show up to open, then can I get employee B to come and open? Uh, if employee C doesn't show up to close or just leaves because they had an emergency and didn't tell anybody, well, what happened to the, the, the shop close? <sighs> right? Like we've, we advertise online that, you know, our hours are X to Y. Mm-hmm. Are we, 
are we closed? Are we open? <laughs> so that was the biggest thing. Like when we opened, we opened December 29th, January, that first month was just like, how do we staff this place? People didn't want to work. Oh, I'm tired. I stayed up too late last night playing video games. Like, <laughs> bruh. Did no one? You get a bruh from yeah. me. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Can I find your parents and like have a conversation about, you know, like yeah, what's what going on? Just some high school kids or what? A lot. Like, that was, that was, you know. And we yeah, had a right. handful. We had a handful of like stars, and then we had a bunch of, you know, not stars. Yeah. <laughs> other other material. Are other. you firing the not stars? <laughs> they usually take care of themselves. I'll say they probably fire themselves. They usually take care of like themselves. Like I sort them out. And it's it's amazing. <laughs> every every time every time I went to go, like it was like, no, I'm I decided I'm gonna leave. Damn. I'm like, wow, you probably like an hour before me <laughs> saying something like that, or like a like a day before. I had one guy who I really, really liked. He wasn't a high schooler. He was actually a college kid. And and uh, just everything about him, I, I thought he was fantastic. But then he just was making all the right, all the wrong decisions when I would walk away. Ooh. And so I'm like, all right. And that was the one guy that I had to fire. One. Yeah. They one. all fired That's themselves. That's not bad in nine months. Well, they, they, <laughs> that sounds like a <laughs> rite of passage. Yeah. yeah. Well, but it's, you know, I don't know. Probably should have fired more. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I mean, I, I'm a new business owner, right? But I've been in a position where my influence might have, you know, pushed some people over the edge. And I just get to that point. I had a realization. I was like, man, these people, it's paying their bills. You know what I'm saying? I have shitty days. There's times when I was younger and less mature that I had a lot more shitty days than good days, you know? And uh, I don't even think this person's really qualified or competent up to what I think a standard for this employee should be. But at the same time, to like fire someone to ax sometimes i guess you know biblically to separate wheat from chaff is true and good but it's this person it's their life and they just fucking it's me in this moment and i could just i could just make it easier for me by taking that away from them i just believe that they're going to take care of themselves that that thing's going to happen you're not wrong mm-hmm. you're not wrong and i feel so much on the same wavelength because it's like you know that's the difference between looking at someone as a number versus looking at them as a as a person. Right. Here's here's the the skill, the capital they bring to, you know, to the table, right? But at at the end of the day, you are also doing them a favor. Okay? Because if they continue to think that they can do that and get away with it, they will do it down the line and someone's going to teach them the lesson. For sure. Right? Eventually. Someone they're going to have to. Mm-hmm. So my thing is if I and I told by the way, that one guy that I fired was way more respectful than the majority that walked out. And he thanked me, which is, I did not expect that from him. <laughs> Especially it's after... Like best case scenario for him. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I, I caught him, you know, on break when he was supposed to be running the shop. Ooh. Outside of the shop. How did I catch him? By going to the grocery store and seeing him there when I'm like, wait, who's running the shop? <laughs> Say, hey, how you doing? What the fuck? <laughs> what are you doing here? I mean, it's a small town. Like, what were you thinking? That's oh, tough. Oh, okay? that's rough. That's tough. So, so then I come back and I'm like, dude, no. I, I, I can't. Yeah. But you know what? As much as this hurts right now, I truly believe that I'm doing the right thing for you. Yeah. Because you are going to think about this moment. You're going to remember the conversations that we had where I said, hey, if you do this, this, and that, we're going to get you there. You didn't do those things, so you didn't progress. It's, it's on you. But now you're going to think a second time about how you're going to commit yourself to your next job. And I firmly believe that if you want to make money and if you want to grow, you're going to take that and you're going to run with it the next time and you're going to learn from it. And you're going to be you're going to be a little bit more sober-minded next time. Most definitely. So – I like to think, obviously it's easier to think this way, but I like to think that the reason he thanked me was because he saw that too. Right. And that he's going to look back five years, three years, 10 years and be like, okay, yeah, no, I was a little, I was a little immature, but I got this now. Right. So. Yeah. When it's right, it's right. You know, I feel like that's the thing I took away is even he knew it was right. When and appreciated you for doing the right thing, which I think is something we all appreciate. Well, we got to hope, right? right? And if not, he was just you know giving me what I wanted to hear, and you know whatever. That's a crazy level of giving you what you want to hear. 
I look, I, I have gotten to the point where I recognize that I can think I'm doing great by people and they can think I'm doing terrible by them. Like there's no question to the, the, the lengths that I've gone to show somebody how much I care about them as an employee. And they still think that I don't care. It's crazy. So, you know, perception, perception is reality in so many cases. Right. Mm -hmm. And I tell that to the staff, if you look like you're not working, you're probably not working. <laughs> and if you look like you're working hard, then you're probably working hard. There's exceptions to every one of those rules. But if I see you leaning around, like, like Chef George says this all the time, I'm stealing this from him. Mm -hmm. If I see you leaning, I said, you've got time to clean. Time to lean, time to clean. That's it. <laughs> that's it. So what are you doing leaning? Like, uh, I'm not paying you to lean. Yeah, come on now. That that That's a little too far for me. Stay okay. vigilant. All right. Well, just fair. for me. Just for me. But I also, I don't, I think that argument is like. Oh, you were serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just on an eight hour. Just sarcastically, just, you know, like, not, no, most of these shifts are not that long. Okay, that's okay. You're like four hours after school. Four hours after school. <laughs> and, you're, and you show up after the first hour like, um, when do we get my break? Right, right. See, that's a different they attitude. They just got here. Yeah, that's a different <laughs> attitude. Your break was the whole time between school and here. Yeah, context is everything. I was thinking 40, 40 to 50 hour a week workers, you know, a restaurant, let's say it's slow, right before it's going to get busy. Everything's set, everything's pristine. That's different. We're leaning. No, that that's different. You got to take those moments. You're saying everything's ready. Okay. I'm right. saying you're leaning and your station's a disaster. There we go. That's disgusting. You're leaning and yeah. we're... Like we've got boxes that need to be folded in in my world, right? We've got a catering coming up later tonight, and like the the bag for the catering is not ready. Yeah, it's on your mind right now. It's tough. Yeah, it's like you Wait. got time to lean, you got time to clean. Unless there's nothing else to clean, then lean away. That's a good one. That's a very <laughs> that's a good nice one. modifier. That's a very good one. If you cleaned it all, that's that's fine. I'm yeah, cool no, I don't want you being busy for the sake of being busy. Yeah, that's a very good point. I don't want you just to do stuff to make it look like you're doing work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you actually did to work, right? And when you've run out of tasks, then shoot, hats off. You're good, baby. You're good in my book because I've yet to see someone run out of tasks. Right. There's, that's the thing. Yeah, in Sometimes a restaurant, there's always something you can be doing. List. There's always something you could be doing. Like we got, like the the front door, you can see smudges all over it, and it's like, it's like please Windex. Mm -hmm. I buy Windex. Just wipe it down. <laughs> True. I promise. True. We got it. Yeah, that's rough. So only one fire. That's not that, that's not bad. Has well, it been I, a high? Is it is a high turnover? I guess it's, it's slightly it's high. Turnover, really? High uh, I know the food turnover. industry is kind of like that, right? Yeah, we're like over ninety percent turnover. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Nine and ten are going to be gone. I mean, it's a temporal job. It's a transient yeah. job. Yeah, it's not. It's not a career. We most are of the time. we are down now to this core group of like insanely hard workers. Hmm. You know? I love it. Do you pay them well? We we do. We pay them with slices of pizza all day. That's it. That's what they <laughs> all day long, baby. <laughs> Any slice they want, they will never no, starve. And, and these guys are making good tips too. I mean, like we worked it out. Like we're we're almost seven dollars an hour in tips right now. Wow. I'm like, Solid. so they're already making a decent wage, and now like I don't. I think I have most of my staff are. You don't have to talk numbers. You know, are just making at least a dollar fifty. At least. <laughs> Right. This is 213 yeah. <laughs> with inflation <laughs> come on no that's good though but i guess because the question is more about like um these competent people that you have how are you what are you doing to retain them i guess you're begging yeah right i mean <laughs> please don't leave <laughs> trying to build a relationship right <laughs> please because <laughs> the thing about um you know people not being up to a standard or having the standard be if you got time to lean you could be cleaning unless your station is clean well how clean is it that's relative but no, if you no, get I mean, these like, real competent uh, people, though, I'm saying you get these superstars, you don't got to ask those questions. I agree. You, you I agree. just get to trust them for the I most agree. part. And most I time agree. you see someone like that leaning, you're pretty like, you don't really need to go ask them, you know, hey, what are you doing? Because it's like you That's kind correct. of, you know, That's their correct. character, right? That's correct. But those people, it's hard to retain those people. Because, yeah, because they, they actually want to work. Right. Well, now you have, you have whether they're high school or college age, they, they say they want to work. Do they work? Hmm. They come to work expecting to not work. Really? Trying to not work. <laughs> Both. Actively working on not working. <laughs> and I actually to <laughs> I told one of them that. I said, if you put as much effort in following the rules <laughs> as you do in trying to skirt your job, gosh 
darn it, you'd be a force to be reckoned with. Right. Dude, that's someone I want to keep around because they're a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I mean, my friend Jonathan Stone, I'm going to tag you in this. That guy is so good at getting out of work. He's phenomenal. <laughs> he's a mastermind, dude. I mean, that's why he's my boy is because like normally with people, I'm like, hey, you got to be, you got, well, come on, we're doing the nitty gritty. Yeah. He's like, fuck that. Why would I? Because I could, and we could just. And watch, I'm going to do this. And then I'm just like, he's going to be somebody someday, bro. He's got it figured out. I mean. A con artist. (laughs) Fucking finagling. He's an inspiring actor. So I feel like he's real creative. He's trying to finagle America for millions through a Hollywood production. He's working on it. (laughs) Come on. That's my dog. Come on, Jay Stone. But these personalities, I think, are really help drive business, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Is like people, I don't know, you just find people, People come for the personality. Mm -hmm. So if I hire the right person... People are going to come to see that person, believe it or not, because they get they get treated a different way by that person. They are their name is remembered. I was talked about hospitality mm. earlier. I mean, like hospitality is a big deal. I, I'm actually very convinced that it's like a cornerstone of life, big time. Right? When people talk about love. You can't have love without hospitality, and you can't have hospitality without love. They just don't. They don't work. You've got to love your customer to do hospitality. Have to. You've got to. Because Ooh. otherwise, like, how do you how do you smile at someone who's telling you that you're you're a terrible person or you're you know, your your food was someone messed it up and ruined their night and like how do you talk them off that ledge? You can only do it with love. Even if you say you don't, it's gotta be there somewhere. So how does it sit with you, Justin? I'm trying to think. I guess hospitality, yeah, well, when we say hospitality, what are we referring to exactly? It's like hosting somebody or yeah, like just sure. being like nice to someone or like well, not I mean, being like, nice. The, the hospitality industry to me spans beyond just hotels. It, it spans into, into food and beverage. Everything. Right? So hospitality is from the moment they walk in the door, from how they're hosted, you know, at the front desk, mm-hmm. how they're greeted, how they're seated, how they're served, the attention that you take to care for them. When you replace that you know, spoon or that fork, when you see that their glass is half full and you fill it before they ask you, you know, when you go and you, when you assume, I think that the level of service and obviously we're, we're in pizza, right? But you and I have both, you know, served in fine dining establishments. So it's like you have it as well. Yeah. So it's like, if you can anticipate somebody's want or need, you're you're doing service. You're doing the appropriate amount or the above and beyond, right? Mm-hmm. That's hospitality, though. Yeah, yeah. That's hospitality. Yeah, I guess anticipation of needs and the service, providing service. That word to to throw some stereotypes. <clears throat> now I'm gonna now I'm gonna throw a Greek word at you. That's philoxenia. Philoxenia. <laughs> most of Greek is is made up a ton of compound words. So philo meaning friend, and Xenos meaning uh, uh, stranger, foreigner, stranger. Huh. Hmm. So it's it's the the friend of the visitor, friend of the guest, friends of the stranger. You can go so far as 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 stretching that philo to being love. Um, a francophile is somebody who loves French stuff, right? Okay, that's an American word. We got that from you know Greek. And that's it's the huh. same concept, right? You're loving that stranger. You're you're giving them service, big time. So to me, that's the root of what we do, and I think that's what separates restaurants. You know, we're 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 providing a service. That's what separates us from you know the goods and the, and the bad, right? The wheat and the chaff, as you said, right. So how how much are you gonna love that customer? Yeah, you better love them a lot because they're paying your bills big time. That's that's kind of like a necessary evil, or like I was, I guess, in reference to what you were saying about hospitality and love, you can't like and being in- inseparable. It's like sometimes some of those clients are hard to love sometimes. Sure, but you love the you you need to love them. You need to love them, even if they're problem child. But what's the <laughs> highest form of love? I mean, this is getting deep. Yeah, I'm with you. No, I'm, what's let's the get hi- to the bottom of it. <laughs> the highest form of love is to love someone that doesn't love you. Yeah, unconditional self sacrifice. Oh, truly yeah. unconditional love. I mean, like think about that, and not, you talk about biblical. That's pretty darn biblical. 
Oh, dude, the only thing that That's got me through... the basis of life right there. <laughs> some of my shifts were consciously thinking about, this is me in my pursuit of trying to be as Christ-like as I can be, is trying to love this person that I don't want... I don't want to do this. Right. A lot of life is doing stuff you don't want to do. And, and sacrificing what it is that I would, quote unquote, want in service of trying to love this person. So I'm going to go be warm and kind and anticipate their needs because... I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. Like... Exactly. Right. Like I, I'm being a servant, you know, be a servant to these people. I'm literally serving them right now. So like that, that, mm, like you said, love is tied into hospitality to do the hospitality. I had to tap into that so that I could perform at the job. Some, mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. every night, but a lot of times. But I ha- see, I have buddies in the industry that think what I say can be pretty crazy. And I, I'm very well recognizing of the fact that it is crazy in so many ways because we have grown up. I have grown up with you know old greek grandfather old greek uh, old persian grandfather you know my my dad my mom the customer is always right gosh that just it's a dagger <laughs> so many times like, how is that right but if you and i think to be a restaurant owner and i i don't know what i'm talking i've been a restaurant owner for 9 months so i do you can throw everything i said out the window just <laughs> doesn't matter but the only thing that i can think of is that we have it's incumbent upon us to treat that customer that way because they now more than ever have a limited number of dollars and they are selecting to risk their dollars with you true big time and they're not going to the fast food establishment for whatever reason that night and they're going to you so that fast food establishment could have been ten dollars for the same pizza or twelve dollars for the, and it's fourteen with me or whatever right and they take a risk because they generally feel, I think we can kind of, for the most part, you know, agree that the fast food places have consistency down pat. Yeah, that's a big selling point. So it's like, I know that if I'm going to take $10 of my hard earned money, I'm going to get that. And it might not be the best, but it's going to be exactly what I expected it to be. Right. Well, they're consistently inconsistent. <laughs> That's a different story. I know I'm gambling on these fries here. Yep. There's a 50-50 shot. These fries are going to be cold. Yeah. <laughs> That's predictable. Yeah. That happens. That happens. Like, I factored that into the Did they remember the, the pickle risk. in my burger? Right. Like, I wanted the pickle in the I burger. said, no tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> they always get you the drive through mm-hmm. Sometimes just to mess with you. Yeah, I, that's what yeah, it like, is. Oh, fuck them. I had to make a good relationship. <laughs> they don't love me. Yeah, they don't love him. They don't love us as much. But it's okay. We kind of, you know that going into it. You know what I'm saying? You know that making that decision. They they eyes wide open. My yeah. eyes are wide open in this establishment. Yeah, but I guess on the off chance, or not off chance, but I guess in the alternate scenario where they don't go with that because of whatever reason, and then do do go to you, you know what I'm saying? They say, I guess it's a. I guess what were you leading up to with that? Or so I mean, like you 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 look at that, and then they come to you, and they give you maybe the same, if not a couple extra dollars, and they're like, here, mm-hmm. okay, we, we 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 took a risk, we tried the pizza, and for whatever reason, it wasn't as hot as they wanted. Or it wasn't as perfect as they expected. Or, I mean, the amount of the amount of critique that we get is it's 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 a high amount of scrutiny. I asked for olives. Why were there not enough olives? Like that's Ugh. super subjective, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't. Uh, well, I expected more cheese. You could have asked for extra cheese. Like I could sit there and fight over every single one of these. You know, it, it was their expectation in line with what's like arguably fair to have perceived i'll give you every once in a while a staff member is going to mess up right like, that's on me but i think right? that's like you could look at it and be like Come, yeah like, our standard is a three quarters of a the, the yeah. industry standard is three quarters of who, cups of olive who cares mm-hmm. what the standard is right like i trained them to do this they're, they're following my my instruction right right am i going to sit there and that that's our normal amount so i'm sorry you don't like it like <laughs> no i'm going to be like you know what you're right let me go get you some more olives yeah what did that cost me <laughs> nothing a couple Nothing. more olives. <laughs> yeah, more olives. Ten cents. <laughs> Cost me more olives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good point, sir. Inventory. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget about no, that. No, but I mean, like, think, think even of the refund. Think of, of the discount, right? Like, what did that What did that do? Now, I took somebody who was pissed off, and I turned them into somebody who's at least not walking out of here seething. Definitely. 
There's places that I mm. won't go back to because of a bad experience. And then over all of No, not all specifically. But when you said, um, I, if I go to a place and they're closed early, like if they close at nine and it's eight, eight fifteen, and they say like closed in the I, I know it's probably some younger person that just left early or whatever i'm fucking pissed dude. <laughs> i'm fucking pissed i've worked in a, you can't moving. even you can't even stay till i'm don't stay late you can't stay open till nine you know what i'm saying you're posted I closed hours that. i hate that so i will put an order in with my staff i hope they're not watching <laughs> i'll put an order in you know like two minutes to close because the rule is when they sign up this is what we say we are open till nine. If somebody gets in at eight fifty nine, if someone even gets in at nine, you're serving them for sure, for sure. And so, I'm a I'm a big believer in that. Somebody is never going to come back because they now you've taken their trust because they trusted Google the listing that you built, mind you, right? Yep. Right. <laughs> they, they took the Yelp listing, they took the whatever, and they said, I, "I'm gonna I'm gonna be there when you come." No. Mm. And the next time, it's like what. Uh, once bitten, twice shy. Yeah, yeah, true. A lot less likely to come back. Correct. Once, almost, almost zero percent chance. Sometimes. Yeah. Maybe one Damn time. Damn near. The it happened a lot at this subway next to the tennis center that I would go work out at when I was in high school. And if I that would make me so mad that I was like, man, I hate that subway. I'm not going back there. But as soon as I'm leaving tennis and I'm starving and I want you know bacon chicken ranch, <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh. I'm going right back there. So sometimes that's maybe what drives us crazy is like, I kind of need the thing they're selling from my routine and my commute. But I think that the overarching message that it doesn't cost a lot for olives, that, that that one hospitality piece, that one, you know, you're right. It's worth like most of the time, infinitely more maybe dollars or word of mouth marketing or just goodwill going back onto the community making sure someone leaves at least happy if they're upset, you know, instead of scathing, like you said. Scathing could do like a lot of damage if all of a sudden you get a bad reputation for yeah, doing poor yeah, customer service, you yeah. know? I I had one person and I I don't have anything against this person, but I had one person come at me and I, I, it felt personal and that could be my mistake, right? I think I hmm. think at the end of the day, I take too much stock in my reviews because I will sit there and I will read every single one and I will respond personally to every single one. And at this point, we're up to 211 on Google and... 30 something on Yelp. Let's and go. and after today depending on what you think, I mean I'm expecting to see yeah. somewhere in the ballpark between 2 and 4 stars, I don't know, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> but I mean like this one person reached out and they wanted a refund. Ooh. Okay, and I that that stuff doesn't get to me. Again, it's what is it? It's a couple dollars. Mhm. They didn't ask for a full refund. Oh, which I found perplexing. Yeah. <laughs> They asked for a refund on the one pizza that was, let's say, 20 bucks, a third of what the total bill was, because we added sauce. We do Detroit style as well. So we added sauce on top when they said no sauce. Total mistake on our part, right? There's no excuses. We messed up. So sorry. Can I remake it for you? It's my go-to. Yeah, definitely. If you're a business owner, you're not in the business of just Here's some cash. No, no, no. Can I? I'm going to fix it for you because I want your experience to be good next time, or I want you at least to know that I recognize my mistake. I want to fix it. But for whatever reason, they didn't want the, ref- the they didn't want the remake. They wanted the the refund. So then I have to go and try to get them a refund. And believe it or not, there are some point of sale systems out there that are still not in the 21st century. I happen to have one of them. Oh no! So it took me a while. So let's say they reached out on a Sunday night and I responded on a Sunday night out of outside of business hours. And then the following Sunday, they were ticked off that it wasn't done yet. And they basically called me out and said, I'm not doing customer service because it hadn't been done yet. And I was like, I'm, I'm so sorry. I thought customer service was offering to remake the entire order, including the, the full order, not just what we messed up. Like to me, that's above and beyond. Right. Big time. But... To you, customer service was not following through with, you know, the refund within five business days. I don't disagree that within five business days would have been nice, but, hey, I'm not in control of how quickly these guys work, unfortunately. I had to put a ticket in. This is ridiculous. It's 2024. Yeah. I had to put a ticket in with customer service. 
and then they had to go to the credit card processor, and then the credit card processor took their time, like, I, whatever. Finally, it got done. But after, I received a one star on Google, a one star on Yelp, and a one star on TripAdvisor. Mm. It's like, really? They went out of the way for that one. They went out of their way. They made they made a TripAdvisor account just to <laughs> <laughs> put a review in. Yeah, because nobody uses tough. TripAdvisor here. Who That's for fuck? people that visit the United States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? There you go. But here I am, via email, like trying to do da- damage control. Like, hey, what else can I do? Like, I really, like, I hope you understand. I feed my family with this business. Yeah, I did. And that I one I could. star review over twenty out of sixty dollars is it's gonna. I'm gonna feel it. Even if it doesn't really hurt me at the end of the day. Not directly, but... Yeah, I'm going to feel it. it. Definitely will. Let me let me fix this to where you... Like, how do I fix this to the point where, you know, you can fix your review? Or at least oh, take it down. and then I got roasted on an updated review. No. Like, the audacity for trying to change the review and why won't you? Like, And I'm like, oh, oh my God. It gets worse. It gets worse. Medusa's head grows. Oh, Another yeah. snake. Yeah, so I just... At the end of the day, I, I wrote a final update saying review, uh, refund done. I still have nothing against you. I will still make you the whole order. <laughs> yeah, come back in any time. I will still make you the whole order on me. Sounds like a competitor. Crickets. That's not how a normal person acts. No, there's a guy, Mike Bausch, that I super respect in this industry. And uh, and he says, uh, he wrote this book called Unsliced. And I highly suggest that any business owner read it. Um, so he says he's going to go to the end of the earth. You know, for customer service. My thing is, I'm I'm not going to kill you with kindness. I'm going to murder you with kindness. Nice, I like that. Right, and so it's like it's real intense. It's very intense. <laughs> hey, I'm Greek, dude. We do it like go big or go home. Do it like big, that. yeah. So I I like my line is I'm going to remake the whole order. I'm going to go buy you a pizza from somewhere that you really like because obviously you don't like my stuff. Yeah, extra so wow. Let me let me let me take care of. Very rarely has anyone ever taken me up on it, but when they do, they're just shocked that I go out of that, you know, to that distance. And now they come in. I had a guy yell at me in the shop, yell like in front of me because the pizza was five minutes late. Full, I'm not talking like snowflake yell. I'm like, this guy was yelling. How'd you respond? Jesus, I thanked him. (laughs) What? Can you give me some dialogue? How'd you think of <laughs> what kind of what kind of verbiage are you using there? I, I can sense your frustration. I'm so terribly sorry for. Uh, you're right. We should have been on time. But I, I do understand that there are things that that happen. It's not your fault that we got busy right before you came in. But your pizza did get delayed, and I just want you to know I have a couple ways I can handle it. I can go ahead and refund you right now. I can tell you it's going to be made in a couple minutes and still refund you. Like, wh- what would you like me to do? Sheesh, total ball in their court. Yeah. yeah. And so then it, it, gets, it. it gets to the point where it's like, you know, at some point they recognize that, okay, someone actually cares. And so you bring the, you bring the temp, temperature down a little bit. And so then it's incumbent upon us as the, this is my opinion, but it's incumbent upon us to continue to keep that temperature low, right? So you have a fire over there that's burning and you've kind of poured ice on it by removing anything that they can be upset about because you just completely owned it. You're not fighting them, mm. but it's smoldering. And all it takes is a light wind <laughs> to just definitely light it back up again. At this point, it needs to be perfect. That pizza better come bro. out and it better be fucking perfect, bro. <laughs> and the amount of times that you do a remake and you're like, Oh my God, the remake's bad. Like, no, how did they, how did Fuck. they mess up the remake? Right? Okay. And so then you're like, you're like trying to find a way to hide because the guy is intently watching. Yep. Like this is a different incident, but like they're watching, and it's like, oh no, no, that wasn't yours. Like it was totally there. Like, <laughs> like can you get another pizza in the oven? Like it's six minutes. Like how can I make six minutes feel like one? Talking, talk, you song, and dance. Get back out there, start song talking, and dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look over here. Look at me. One thing so that, that I'm definitely doing for you right now is eliminating the time in between when this conversation ends and when the pizza comes out. So, but by the time I'm done talking, said, your oh, pizza I, will I, be ready. I, it will be I've ready. I've done that. I've, I've said like I've I've called. I've I've shine. You shine light on the problem, right? Like it's yeah. just a big light. Yeah. Well, at least at this point, I'm just going to do anything I can to talk. Kind of like a, a radio announcer is <laughs> going to like. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 
too. We're waiting right now live. They're coming in. We don't know where they're going to be here. Like but that. look at that. Oh, my gosh. The door is just so beautiful. There's like, like <laughs> One other option is to just wait in the kitchen and isolate the customer, right? I we mean, have an open kitchen. Oh, yes. <laughs> so we don't hide it from that guy. You know what I'm He's going to be looking right at you. But you this... can sit there and look mad. You're like, you're like hurry up, guys. <laughs> going, <laughs> like, going. Make them feel better. I don't know. Going, yeah, like, we're going to berate our customers. We're going to berate our staffs the way our customers berate us? No. <laughs> no. But I had the same that same guy. It's like, all right, mister, let's just say Johnson. Easy. Not his real name. Um, because now he's my customer. I just give you the, the spoiler alert. But Mr. Johnson, we've got three minutes on your pizza. Hey, Mr. Johnson, it's a minute to go. Hey, I'm boxing it up right now, Mr. Johnson. You'll be out of here in no time. Oh, look at that. Only 15 minutes behind. <laughs> Like I mean, which is totally acceptable, on a busy Friday night, like you you put your order in, you schedule to pick up for five forty five. First of all, you were what were you thinking? That's in the middle of the rush. Like mm. you know, <laughs> okay, it's somewhere between ten to fifteen minute grace period. Like average person gets that. That seems pretty reasonable. I would this think I would think like, you would have the rush built into the estimated time. Oh, you would, you would, you would, you, think, you, you would, you would, <laughs> you don't have staggered times like this if, guy, time to lean, time to clean, and I are over here. Hey, uh, I'm speaking for the people. Look, <laughs> you would think, and you're correct, that technology in 2024 is there, right? Right. Mm. But we've already established that <laughs> I can't even do my own refunds. Uh, so what yeah, are you true. really expecting true. from exactly. me at this point? Fair enough. <laughs> As of November, that should change. Like we're going with a completely new system. Everything's That's right. Gonna be, like it's going to be exciting. That's right. Anyways, I mean, the other thing is a ding for me isn't. I, I'm. I'm like. I'm the, not telling you where we are. Like, yeah, there's there's no address on there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most forgiving person. Like, um, I, I, when I went to Domino's, they've got their best technology in the world, right? right. It was fucking. Sorry, ten forty five at night. Nobody was there. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. said your pizza will be ready in twelve minutes. What pizza? Uh, <laughs> exactly. I got there and they were like, all right, yeah, you can just, uh, hang out here in your car. We'll bring it out here in just a minute. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm like 10 minutes late to your 12 minute estimated time. How is this pizza not ready? Notice they don't even have chairs for you to sit in there. They had it locked. <laughs> well, the, oh, the, the, door, locking it down. the door was locked, yeah. but they were still, you know, doing pizzas, which I thought was strange. Yeah. Ba- it, backdoor pizzas. Yeah, exactly. I guess. I don't know. But I, there was a lot of there was a few people there. I don't know if they were all buying pizzas, so I wasn't too sure about this location. Hey, there's some deals going on in there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're wheeling and dealing. Uh, can I get a job? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you want to go there, but I bet you could get a job if you wanted one. <laughs> Regardless, I did think about it. I was like, man, what the fuck? How, how long does it take to make a pizza? But then I'm instantly like, it's cool. It's whatever. I'm not going to be mad at this guy. You know? There's some, I feel like... Most of us are like that. Exactly. Right. Right. Because like the guy's got a job. And he's, we, we don't know what's going on in his life. Like, uh, the average human being is a benefit of the doubt kind of person. Right. I think we most of the time give for that to like For the most part, everybody. yes, I agree. I would think so. Except for the ones that go on Yelp. <laughs> yes, the <laughs> YouTube commenters. Those fuckers. <laughs> You're the, this is the worst podcast I've ever heard. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how Said the, no one just about die. this one. <laughs> just die, both of you die. <laughs> well, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> people just looking for someone or someone to to vent or not vent but you know like the, the equivalent of venting with their own life they're just trying to get some of that out of their well, internal haven't you noticed too that it seems like that the people that would be vocal it seems like bad things happen to those people and it's like the one person we messed up today is the one guy that's going to leave sure, a review about sure, it totally yeah. it's crazy I mean, that's, that's what Murphy's Law yeah, yeah exactly right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean I think I think uh, we had an uh a comment early days on our Instagram, which it's been all very positive. But somebody like I think put like a sick uh, emoji emoji or something on our pizza, and I don't remember if I did or I didn't. But I I think I was it was like one of those things where I'm like, oh, thanks man, we think it's pretty sick too. <laughs> <laughs> sick, bro. This shit's sick, bro. <laughs> he had the throw up emoji, but like mm-hmm. that's marketing, man. <laughs> turn that into a positive. You gotta land that plane. You gotta turn that shit. Cause yeah, I guess uh, yeah. One thing we, talk, we were talking about earlier was this. Cause the customer's always right. That's definitely the mentality for I think for all business for the most part. Cause you need fucking customers to make you money. Like if there's no customers, no money. So like the customer to some degree always has to be right. But literally, they they can be wrong. They can be wrong. Sometimes. They totally can. It's like all right, that's that's not medium rare. It's like that's a that's a perfect medium. They rare. totally can. It's like 134 degrees internal yep. temperature, bro. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Cause yeah, perception is reality. But it would be better. Now, we can't sit there and train them. 
I don't think. No. <laughs> but it'd be better if they said, you know, this is not what I wanted. There you go. There you go. There we go. Because communication is, I mean, like, that's one of the other cornerstones, right? I want to be able to tell you what I really mean. Exactly. Right? Not, this isn't medium rare. Medium rare to me is... Um, yeah, my ex- expectation is this, right? And that's and you can, you go to certain places where you can you can you can hear it in the voice of the server. They got their game down pat, right? They're like, so just so you know, medium rare to us is mm-hmm. it should be you know a little just a little bloody in the middle, you know. And whereas you go to somewhere else, okay, yeah, medium rare, yeah, pull, no problem. And then you come back, and now you've got what, this variation so large a truck can fall through, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, expectation. Warm red center. If you want pink, we need to go to medium. Yeah, there you we, go. We need to. There you go. The, the, yeah, <laughs> let's. And then that's when the servers, you know, gets down. You know, he squats down. Yep. Like, get on one right, knee. All right, John. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing tonight? Like, <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> Which, but that's a pet peeve of mine, by the way. Don't hmm. don't kneel down in front of me at the I've table. Heard, like, I've heard a lot of people say <laughs> it's not a move. What it's, do you it mean? It shouldn't be a move. It, it shouldn't be. I've done it. I've, Full disclosure. I've done it. I've seen it I've done. done it. It. But I recognize now that I don't like it. Some people are. Well, what about it? They do you not like? I don't know. <laughs> just off putting. I don't know. It's, I don't, like, why are you just don't squat in front of me? <laughs> just maintain your normal height. Look, take. Kaepernick, get up! Yeah, come on, dog. <laughs> Tebo, Tebo, take a knee real quick. What a bruh. What if it's a manager? And he's coming oh, over second, to second bruh. By the way, yeah. <laughs> put the bruh counter up. Yeah, he's up. We're on two. <laughs> Manager comes over, issue at hand, some discrepancy. Waiter can't handle it. You need to talk to a manager. Manager comes over, gives you the squat down. In that scenario, the first thing you're thinking is, bro. Get up, son. <laughs> <laughs> you got him. Instantly disadvantage. You're getting whatever you want for your comps. You're good after that. Stand up, sir. Stand up. What are you talking to me? <laughs> no, I honestly, I can't tell you what it is that I don't like about it. From there, my there, perspective, uh, the only time, I, a lot of times, I, when I would go for it, it's because... Uh, Table height is kind of at my waist, and it's weird to have a conversation where I'm trying to connect with you, where you, your, your I get face it. is in my waist. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I get, I get the understanding because I made. The, I'm like again, I'm, the first thing I'm doing is confessing that I like some. I don't like something that I've done. Okay, so I've done it. I've in my mind messed up, but I, I can't put my finger on it. I can't tell you that I think it's acceptable when there's a kid, right? Because I think the whole getting down to the level of the kid is just, it's so wonderful to, to be at a level of a kid eye to eye where I think that's memorable for the child. So part of someone's dining experience is if you can make their child happy, you just made them happy. Even if they didn't like your food, your service, your atmosphere, your whatever. Definitely. You made the kid happy. And we live in a society where it's all about making the kids happy, which we could talk about later. It's why it's been struggle hiring high schoolers. <laughs> But but it is what it is. That's what you're saying. Big time. Yeah. Easy way for a five star review is to go sure. out of your way to make the. Can right. I, hey man, do you want to try a mocktail tonight? You want to do a little a little something crazy, maybe mango, something sweet. You get the kid a mocktail, and all of a sudden he's super happy. Ask him about their soccer game, whatever, dude. That was just a straight for me. When I my goal was to get five star reviews, I knew that if I was killing it with the table and I could help the kid feel like he had a good experience in this formal space. That was going to push it over the edge when I told them that reviews are really important to us. They're, um, you know, help drive our business. Lifeblood of your business. Exactly, yeah. Um, if you wouldn't mind leaving us a line somewhere. My boss will puncture my tires if I don't get a review tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next That's the next go-to if they're a little window. bit timid about getting their phone out, you know? <laughs> yeah, bro. The, I, I definitely noticed that. I definitely work in, in some of the finer dining establishments as a server. If they have the kids with them, like one of the – there was two moves for sure that I was always the go-to. It's like sometimes I would try to get their order for the kids like immediately, mm. like as soon as they sat down, like waters. It's like, okay, aside from drinks for y'all, like – can I get something started for them so they're like occupied, you know what I'm saying? So you can like chill and then have dinner and Anticipating shit. Anticipating needs, bro. Right. So like that that was always a hitter. And then also whenever the steak would if a if a child under ten ordered a steak to like offer to cut it for him, yeah. money. Money. Fucking cash. Oh yeah. That's money. Dad's like, this is what I'm paying for right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we come to a like, place. Oh yeah, because I don't have to cut a steak. <laughs> <laughs> I cut every night for this damn kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Yeah, so some of that would hit for sure. Yeah, I like getting Experience. the kid a mocktail. That was always a money a move for one. me. Mm-hmm. Make them feel like an adult. They all do cheers, you know. I just nice threw a roll of bread. I'm like, here, take, take a roll of bread. <laughs> a roll of bread? What's that? Roll of bread. Oh, yeah. There you go. Bread rolls. Bread Catch, roll. kid. Thank you. I appreciate it. English I thought that language. was a wine I hadn't heard of. <laughs> yeah. Roll of bread. I was like, whoa. Roll of red. 
But, and that's, um, yeah, too long. The podcast is too long. See, I'm not doing very well anymore. We're crushing, dude. We are absolutely crushing. <laughs> oh, we're chilling, bro. Yeah, that's wild. That's crazy. Pizza, it's a whole market. It's a whole so, market. so worst experience as a server, go. There's a couple. There's a couple. I'm trying to remember. Okay, so I'm trying to categorize it in my mind. I have a, opportunities coming. Some of these opportunities, a couple, most of them are just like filed into like super busy nights that were just crazy, being understaffed, overbooked. We're running out of like under inventoried, like, overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, we're we're under on a lot of categories and over in the bad categories. <laughs> it's a bad night. Like yeah, we've we've had a couple rough ones. Yeah, there's one night I know that you're thinking about that oh, I'm yeah. thinking about I've, as well. I've probably two two in my dome for sure. Like a grand opening night that was historically pretty terrible just like in my personal life i'm not sure how it is relative to others in the industry but this grand opening was just some shit y'all it was just crazy just craziness it's just like just food never coming out you know type shit kitchen still getting it getting it figured out the printers in the kitchen not quite routing the right proper way everything was kind of just just piling on top and it was just i guess and, and also at that point we were had like we were a, in between service and management so then we had a slightly different role of obligations. So in that particular night, with that particular set of obligations, my job was to like put out the fires or like table touch. And like, you don't want to touch every table if they're all on fire. <laughs> if you're a server and you have three tables. They're burning <laughs> at some point. <laughs> <laughs> like you only have three tables. Like that, that's it. Your, night, your, your night is limited to three fire tables. But like I have 17 tables I have to go touch and they're all on fire. Yeah. It's like, Fuck. Yeah. That was a rough one. Brutal. That was a rough one. I'm trying to remember if there's any instances of like any like a particular person or like a client that gave me a rough time, but typically it was just being over, over, overbooked and just being in the weeds forever. <laughs> yeah. Living in the weeds for sure. But then I guess one person, just one particular instance of like a customer that always, I don't know why, but this one just like sticks with me. I was at Saltgrass and I was just running food <laughs> because at that point, like once you get to the finer establishments, they have other help support staff to help run the food for you. So you're very rarely running your food, but saltgrass, definitely running your own food for the most part and running other people's foods. And I would just, I ran out a couple trays to a table. It was like a 10 top or something. Started handing out some of the food. And then someone asked me for sauce or something. It's not even my table. I'm just helping out. And he's like, can I get some Heinz 57 or whatever? I'm like, okay. Yeah. Go back, come back. Like the guy, the gentleman is just, he doesn't like go into me. But he definitely expresses his his discontent with the with the steak cut that he had received. He's like, "Man, I was just expecting better." Blah blah blah. We could have we could have just gone to Roadhouse across the street. Blah blah blah. I was like, "You're cutting me deep, sir. You're cutting me deep." <laughs> what do you want me? To, what what what? What do you want from me? What do you? I shouldn't even be here. I have a whole other section. I'm out of here, bro. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. It all goes somewhere. It all goes somewhere. But yeah, some 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 trouble clients and just trouble nights. But nothing crazy. I'm sure if I gave you some more t- time in the think tank, I could come up with something. But what y'all got? Worst restaurants. The cutting me deep story gets me. I'm pretty sure, and I hope this isn't a false memory, but I'm almost positive <laughs> I walked by Justin because I was working at the same saltgrass. He'd been and we'd been there for like three weeks. It hadn't. It wasn't even that long. Yeah, not even that long. And I just hear Justin going. You're cutting me deep, sir. You're cutting me deep. <laughs> and I was just like, what is happening over there? Story corroborated. Yeah. Yeah, it was hard to... Because uh, we were new, too. So we are still trying to figure everything out. A little nervous. You know, want to make sure we make the cut. We're doing a good enough job. And this guy's just laying into my boy. I'm like, oh, geez. No, but same thing. It's hard to remember specific moments of people just like ripping you. Like no one, you know. One time I, I called this guy boss. I was like, sorry about, <laughs> sorry about that, boss. But man, I think the food was at like just late, and I would just I wouldn't get a manager. I'd just be like, "Hey, man, sorry about that, boss. That's shouldn't have taken extra time for these fried pickles, whatever." He goes, "I am not your boss," and I was like, "Yes, sir. I'm sorry. We're in a fucking salt grass." So in my mind, I'm like, "This Texan, like, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to connect with you a little bit." I mean, technically, I'm working for you right now. I was yeah. like, <laughs> "So, so basically, are my boss? <laughs> we could argue that you're paying my bills. You're about yeah. to pay me." <laughs> yeah. Okay, but, and continue. Then, and then he's, he's like, I want to see a manager. And I was like, okay. And this guy complained to the manager that I called him boss. And I think he was like trying to say that I was talking down to him or something like that. or <laughs> that uh, Boss? Yeah. I, I, like I came over and tried to make him feel bad about complaining or something like that. Like I was like, okay, boss. Oh, he's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. So I can understand prick. how boss is not what it used to be, right? 
Okay. I can get that, right? It used to be like a boss was a boss, and now it's just kind of like a diminutive form of like bro. Definitely. So I can I can get that. It's transformed. Yeah. I, I can understand. But at the same time, it's like I'm well the context really? Was it was it no, I like it's no. an upward swinging bro. Yeah. Boss. <laughs> it's an upward swing. Boss? That's really yeah. positively charged. Yeah. Do you do that with the hand motion? Yeah. With like, my whole vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Boss? Yeah. With my energy. I thought yeah. he felt it. He did not. He did not. Yeah, he didn't. So that moment stuck out to me as like a oh, man, people, dude, like wants to get me in trouble over that shit. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? I remember that story happening because yeah, it was, it was at that at the soft we were working at. And then I remember we transitioned into the next restaurant, which was higher price point, a little bit more fine dining. And that terminology was being thrown around fucking everywhere. <laughs> fucking everywhere, bro. Everyone's yeah. calling people boss. Yeah. Like the customers, they're like the regulars, they just have more money. You know, like they're all just people. We're all just fucking people, but they just have more money. Their lawyers are just picked a profession that allows them a little more disposable income. Right. But we're all just people. Sure. Yeah. So I was like, well, that's so weird how it's like, and you would think that like sometimes because we started on the river walk, going to kind of higher steakhouses, higher steakhouses, and you would think that the, the drop off would, like with the higher price point, the tips would be lower just because like overall like money expenditure. It's like, oh yeah, people probably don't want to, they're going to spend all this money on the steak. They probably don't want to have any extra to spend on the server. But that wasn't the case either. It was like, oh no, it was weird. It was a weird, maybe we just found like a different kind of restaurant that's like yeah. it's a higher higher price point but it has a different sort of feel to it vibe to it but yeah i just remember that, that sticking out to me i was like that guy was like got a manager because he was mad <laughs> and he called him boss like, yeah and people over here is like chilling this guy just spent like a thousand dollars yeah it makes you want to cool it makes you want to draw a conclusion that people that have a more trill personality are more likely to be successful and these people that are more stuck up and neurotic and ha- want to have something to be upset about and looking causing free conflict, shit. Looking for low frequency vibration doesn't <laughs> result in this life that lets you grant you access into these nicer places. I, I want to draw that conclusion so I can justify my investment in having this nicer personality where I'm like super cool, super chill. Benefit of the doubt kind of people. Right. Right. But I don't know I if don't that's, that's a true wrong. translation. I don't think that's wrong. Yeah. Would you go out on that limb? Would you say it's worth it literally? I think it's worth it to always... I think it's always worth it to go out on that limb. I do. I think like you, literally, like it's going to come back to you. It's going to come back. And I'm not a karma guy, but I, I do understand that you do good things, and you know sometimes good things come back to you. I'm, I was always taught that you put a smile on someone else's face, and then down the line you're going to be smiling too. Mm. Yeah, definitely doesn't happen right away. Mm-hmm. But you you've got to constantly put the, that other first. That is the basis of hospitality. You're not serving yourself first. You're serving them first. Right. Sure. Yeah. I, I think guessed. that 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 question is one of our slogans here at MJ38 is that it's worth it. And the the thing that we're talking about that it's worth it is is to try to live a lifestyle where you're doing good things because it's the right thing to do because you enjoy doing the right thing because that's kind of what life's about and. But is it worth it is a question. That's why it's the slogan is because it's it's a declaration. It's to say it is worth it. Like we're reaffirming that. I'm standing on that because it is a question to some degree. Does do, Should you be selfish? Do these things come back around? Is generosity the path to where you want to go? And thus you could be selfishly generous because you want what you want out of life. Almost like a pragmatic way to get where you want to go. That's like false humility, right? Well, Someone's hu- humble for the sake of, you know, making it look like they're humble. Right. Humble. Justin says a lot of time, um, like, wh- what's the what's the true intention of the energy? Like, where did the energy really lie in the choices that you had made or the decisions that you made? Because that's way more telling than the false humility that you could bear, you know? And so I think that that's a good indicator. But regardless, like, it, is there really proof on paper that having those good intentions and, and doing good on people and trying to do your best for everything around you, is it? really going to come back around for you in your life. And maybe if it's not literally even going to come back around, it's just still worth it to live that life because I think it's a more enjoyable life. You're going to feel better about yourself. Talk about sleeping good at night, you know, not having your end of your life come by and feel like things passed you by. I think it's, it's living your life ab- above reproach. Mm. You know, like can somebody, someone can always, you know, find you reproachable. Reproachable? Approachable is a good. No, I don't know. <laughs> Here we are coming up with uh, our own vocabulary. Making making <laughs> words. Look, look it up like the BMW. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to. But I mean, like, I I think someone can always find an issue with you, cool. right? And 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 you don't you don't want to live your life in such a way where you're constantly, 
you know, worried about what others think. But at the same time, if you can live your life in such a way where you're always operating, you know, in the good side of things, you're always you're always trying to be, you know, the best and not in a haughty manner. But like, I want to do the best by someone. I want to make sure that if if I'm going to go back and someone's going to judge me on this, right? Are they going to judge that I was I didn't care? Or are they going to judge that I cared? Are they going to judge that I I tried to help? Or are they going to judge that I didn't try to help? Right. So my thought is just operate based on you're doing the right thing, period, end of story. Yes. And hopefully it comes back around. And if it doesn't, it was still worth doing. Right. Yeah, doing the right thing is always worth it. Yeah, to, of approaches to address in such a way to express disapproval See, there we or go. disappointment. <laughs> to to live above. Guy. Not humble at all. I'm not humble at all, but I got it right. <laughs> hey, I, I, I like that. Don't worry. You don't worry about being humble around right. here. If you made a buck, you get a buck. <laughs> yeah, please beat your chest. Two on. points on the board. <laughs> I'd be disappointed if you didn't dance. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Mom, for teaching me vocabulary. Come on. <laughs> That's good shit. I like that. I was, ho- I was homeschooled, by the way. <laughs> really? Wow. And George, too, right? Isn't that what he yeah. said? But he usually uses it as a way to like stab at his mom. <laughs> He's like, I don't know, Mom. I was homeschooled. Like, oh, no, shit. <laughs> I'm like, George, no. she's right there. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'd, I, I would love to get into what homeschooling was like for you, but to just to cap off the, you know, is it worth it debate, the ongoing debate all the time, as a business owner, there's probably... I would assume a lot of opportunity to cut corners, mm. to report things in a way that's more beneficial to the consumer rather than the authoritarian. Um, I, I think there's what's what's right is probably a question not that you think about all the time, but you probably have to have a sense of we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it this way because it's the right thing to do. But would you say that that business owner is not as effective or optimized as a business owner who is getting what's the goal to have numbers to have growth to have revenue whatever the goal might be let's say that they're really great at that but they're cutting a ton of corners is that a a better business operator than the latter or former rather if you're looking at things on a on a numerical scale only sure yeah easy easy right right yeah so that's that's the problem that that was a long question with like three different different questions jump jump in there that's i mean that's the that's the problem is most people look at a business owner as can they make money or do they not make money and and that's I get it. That's why we get into business. We don't get yeah. in business to pad egos, although there are some that do. We don't get in business just to say that we're in business, although there are some that do. We get into business to make money. Yep. I think what it boils down to is how quickly and how how long are you willing to take to make money? Because you can go with this more new school style of I'm going to make money. That's it. Like, I don't care. I'll step on anyone's back to get there. Or you can go with a little bit more old school, which like, you know, this is what my, my, my grandfather did. And this is what so many like him came to this country and made friends by taking care of people, right? And made a business by feeding people. And it's like, okay, I'm going to feed you the most amount I can for the least amount of money so that way you feel like I care. So you see a value out of this relationship. Uh, guy, dear friend that I know uh, out, in, out in Montreal. I mean, he talks about when he had his his restaurant. He did he did pasta, and he's like, I just f- I loaded that plate because it's pasta. What was my cost on 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 pasta? I made my own. He goes, Hey, right? It's like flour and water and egg and salt, and that's it. So he's like, I just made sure they had the biggest plate they can get their hands on, and I charged them as least that I, li- little amount as possible. And I just did as many covers as I could. So, you know, fast forward to now, and it's it's harder to run a business than it's ever been in so many ways, right? There is technology that makes it easier, but then there's also technology that makes it harder. There's taxes that are worse in many cases than they were before. There's There's more liability in a very, you know, litigious society that just wants to go after you for no apparent reason. You know, I joke with my customers, like, hey, just so you know, it, it's hot. It, we don't put on their caution contents hot, but, you know, it's, <laughs> don't get don't get upset with me when you burn the roof of your mouth because you can't wait to take, <laughs> right. take a bite. It just came out of an oven. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, like, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it is a really rough time to run a business. And, and we are also in an election cycle, right? And so now we're dealing with, well, what's going to happen? And now I'm I'm worried about my money. I'm a consumer. I'm worried about my money, but I'm worried about the economy more. And I'm now making decisions based on what's going to happen. Like, well, if this person gets elected, then I might not spend that money. 
that if that person gets elected, I might pull my money out of that. And and so you have now people thinking in a different way than they're thinking the last three years. Mm-hmm. So a lot of, I think, what's going to happen is going to be contingent upon, and, and at the same time, not contingent at all. Just we've got to get past <clears throat> this magical date of, you know, election day. It's this month, right? It's next month. Uh, November? <laughs> yeah. Okay. November's when we vote. January's when they get sworn in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think, and I think that's, that has a lot to do with why we're seeing, I think, a more depressed summer than we've seen before. Mm. We're seeing a slower pickup because right now we're about to head into the busy time. Halloween is our busiest day of the year, what I'm told, right? I've not had a Halloween open yet, but October is a busy time. Back to to school should have been busier. Mm. It's just not as busy, you know? And then there's a lot of people that are out on, on the fence. They're just sitting and hanging out. And that has something to do with why it's so tough to run a business. And that goes back to how it's so, I think, it's difficult to do the right thing. It's more difficult today to do the right thing. So you have a lot of people that, I mean, just look at it. There's a lot of people that think that they were doing the the right thing, and they're shutting down. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that cut corners that are also shutting down. There's no, you can't paint with the broad brush, you know, anymore. Other than that, every month that's open... We, you know, make it we get to the point where our statistics of shutting down decrease by at least a tenth of a percent. <laughs> <laughs> just move forward, baby. I mean, like it just—it's it, just terrible. Yeah. So, way back to your question, doing the right thing is doing the right thing, and I think it needs to be lauded. And I think there are plenty of people who are going to sit there and going to argue that point back and forth. You know, well, the right thing is to make money. Sure. But the right thing is also to have a purpose behind it because I I believe that the businesses that have the story and can sell with the story and can sell with the reason and the why behind them as opposed to just the cheapest or just the fastest or just the whatever, you know, superlative you want to include, I think they have more staying power. It's just harder to stay for longer. Hmm. If that makes sense, right? Your your period of uncertainty, whether this is going to be a business that succeeds, is going to be a longer incubation, if you will. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you're trying to do the right thing. Right. And you're doing the right thing according to you. And you can have 16 people in a room that all disagree on what the right thing is. Right. Big time. True. But, right, business is supposed to be just about dollars and cents. Right? That's what they tell you. I think that 16 people in a room could agree that it's more than that. But okay. I'm with you that it, whether or not in every argument they reflect that as that's, a principality there you go. There you is go. different, yep. right? Yep. Yep. But I think that we all know that it's more it's more than dollars and cents, and that gets lost. It gets lost in the lifespan of the business from certain people, and yeah. that just happens. It's not everybody's you know shared principle to be honest or to be you know altruistic or you know right. to care forthright. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not trying to scam people right. or. Smoke and mirrors, whatever. Well, and then there's a blur of the line between marketing and and truth, right? Mm -hmm. We always are going to try to market our product in a way that that makes it sound better than it it is. But at the end of the day, if it's a really good product, then that really isn't a hard sell. Mm. And I mean, guys, I know I haven't taken time quite yet, and I should have done this earlier, but I got to show the camera a slice because this is a good product. Well, it's foldable. Did you notice? You talked I about so your, happy your when need I saw to fold. It, bro, look at that thing. <laughs> look at this thing. <laughs> and it's holding its form. Look at that. Chicken bacon. Yeah, tell us about this pizza. It's a chicken bacon ranch. Yeah, so we did a white sauce. Um, our white sauce is more of an Alfredo sauce. Ooh, oh, I like yeah. That. Um, I like that. Oh, yeah. We did our mozzarella on top of that, and then chicken. I like to put the chicken at the bottom so it stays a little bit more moist than when the chicken's right on top. Perfect. It dries out a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, drizzle of our homemade ranch and uh, green onion. <coughs> it looks beautiful. That looks phenomenal. I'm salivating right now. Dude, take a bite, man. <laughs> Dude, I think I should. I, I know should. You're, you're waiting for someone to accept that as being okay. I should. I should. I should eat it hot. You should, but We're, you don't have a toaster here. We have a microwave. It's a microwave. Don't across do that. The All right, I'll, I'll take it home. Uh, we'll take it home. <laughs> Don't, don't, no, don't. <laughs> I mean, you can. As intended, as intended. I have so gifted good. it to you. You could do whatever you want with it. I, I, I want to respect yeah. your game. Yeah. And what would you, okay, so it, 
what, how would you God, advise so to read? <laughs> I <laughs> literally, my up. mouth is watering. I could smell the, the, the crunch. Yeah. I could smell the crunch. Pandora's, <laughs> Pandora's box, Pandora's pizza has been open. Dude. I was, but I guess, so how would you recommend to reheat this? And is your reheating instructions, would that differ from other like pizza establishments? Yes. And, uh, well, I'll answer that and yes. Okay. So 500 degrees. 500 degrees? 500 degrees. No way. A fiery inferno. Hot as shit. Yep. Well, it's about, a, about as high as the average oven's going to get. Most yeah. ovens are between 450 and 500 at home. So stress test my oven tonight. <laughs> 500 degrees, wait for it to preheat. All the way up to 500? And when it goes ding or whatever yours does, right. mm-hmm. um, that's when you put the slice in. Got it. And you do it for like a minute and a half, two minutes, no more. That's nice. it. Okay. Yeah. Wait for that little sizzle to happen on top with the cheese. That's it. Wait okay. too long, too much sizzle, it dries out. But that's how we... Do our slice shop right? So we've got slice. We, got, we make the slices in advance. Oh, okay. Usually an hour to two hours ahead of when someone's going to consume it. Sometimes right, right then and there. But then we're going to throw it in for a slice because we are a slice shop. At the end of the day, you can get a full pie if you want to, but you come and get a yeah, slice. I love that. And it just comes right back to life. It's awesome. And we use quite literally the most expensive cheese in the market really? to try to make sure that when it reheats, it re like you still get a cheese bowl. Nice. Mm. It's not like That's you sad. take. It won't get all like. D- yeah. Now, if you overcook it, totally right. It's going to be just like a cracker. Got it. But there's that beautiful window of about a minute and a half to two and a half minutes, where if everything's working the way it's supposed to, you take a bite and there that cheese still stretches like mm. day one. That's cool. I would not have expected such a high temperature. Yeah. No. Very few. That's do. a great question, right? I was For thinking, everybody. I was very thinking three hundred. <laughs> I mean, you could. It's, it's like just reheating. not going to crisp as much. Ah, uh, okay. And I'm going for a pizza that has a little bit of a crunch. I heard that. I like now, that. It's, it's chewy. Like if you, if you go to the to the um, crust, it's gonna you're gonna get chew because nice. we use a very high gluten flour. Dude, I'm loving the shape of this pizza. I gotta let you know that it is round. Yeah. I'm so. <laughs> I mean, three one four is dick. check one. We've we've accomplished. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a round pizza boy. No, but that's a thick. I mean, it's a big pizza. So thank you for generously giving us such oh, a massive pizza. But right. also, the slice is so foldable. I mean, you already touched on it, but that's nice. So when you buy a, a pizza from us, we do it. We cut it in eight. When we cut it for slices, we cut it in six. When I give it out for fun, and it's like we doesn't have to feed so many people, I cut it in six because it's just. It's what we all love. Now, our when we cut them in a smaller slice, they still fold. Yeah, I just there's something about that <laughs> New York style size where you sit there and you fold it. Piece of pie. Huh? Oh yeah, you get a big old piece of pie. Huh? We're uh, we're getting to a point where I got I have questions I want to ask you, but I kind of want to rapid fire through some questions just oh, so that's that exciting. we can maybe leave a little <laughs> bit more room for like conversation discussion towards the end. Uh-huh. <clears throat> but um, okay, so if you no. Oh, sorry. That's fast. <laughs> and if they... Next question. <laughs> if you opened this pizza shop in New York, this concept, this person, you could take the same team, you could take your same investors, but I'm saying you got to open it in a building in New York. Would your pizza be better than it is now? Uh, it's, I don't I don't know if it'd be better. Oh, it'd be better than it is now? Yes. Just by virtue of where it is? Sure. I mean, no, I don't think it's going to be better. I think it would get more attention. Okay. Because look at how many people are in New York. Okay. I ask a different question. This is typical of somebody who answers a question with a different question. Well, I've got a follow-up question. <laughs> yeah, fair. Good. I'll probably ask another question after that, too. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I ask all of my New York customers, how would we do if we opened up in New York? That's a nice question. What would you think about us if we were open up in like next to your favorite? Like you like Joe's, you like you know John's of of, of Bleecker Street. Like what? How would we do right next to your favorite shop? And I don't know whether they're telling me the truth or not. I never. You never do. Like how many people sure. are going to tell you your baby's ugly? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no one. I would say well, zero. I'd say right up there with right? zero. Maybe one asshole. So I have no... <laughs> Maybe just one And freak. he's sitting across from me right now. <laughs> <laughs> a really honest person. He's like brutally honest. Look, I can't tell a lie. <laughs> that baby ain't going nowhere. That. <laughs> <laughs> that baby's got a face for radio. <laughs> yeah. But Horrible. I mean, I think, I think at the end of the day... We've had a lot of people tell us that the, the pizza would do okay. Yeah. Like, I, like I think you'd be. I don't think every anyone's come out and said it's better than anything I've had in New York. We hear a lot. It's better than anything I've had in Texas. 
Bingo. That's that's what I hear. Hey, I just want to swim in my pond, right? Like, and Texas is is, is about as big a pond as you can get before you call the sea, right? We're right there. It's, it's right huge. there. So, bigger than France. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> there we go. So, I mean, I'm happy with that. Now, how would I do there? It's totally subjective. I'd love to find out one day. Okay. You know, so obviously this podcast is going to go to how many millions of people that are going to find out if we need to open up somewhere else. So. At least one. At least one million. At least one. one. Oh, one person? <laughs> one M. <laughs> <laughs> we'll touch a million. Somewhere between one and one million. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So there's three people that are going to watch it afterwards. At so that... <laughs> least. At least. I'm going to watch it at Sun. So don't worry. <laughs> I won't forget anytime soon. So that was a rapid fire My follow-up question, question with a non-rapid fire answer. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. It was shorter than some of we've We've asked three questions that took about this long of time. And then that was the fourth question. We wrapped up pretty quick, right. relatively. Yeah. Um, my follow-up question is, do you think that New York's pizza is just better than Texas pizza? As a, as a culture, yes. Right? Because New York culture, New York has a, a pizza culture. I'm talking about taste alone. Mm. Yeah, but see, that's, there's more to it than just taste. <laughs> okay. Okay. Take me to, I, I, I'm open to nuance. I, I believe there's more to it than just taste because it's like, what are you doing? I'm walking how many blocks? I've done it, right? And I want a slice of pizza. And it's just... It's not going to fill me up. Most of these slices are thin, like ours. But if I can have a bunch of them, I'm going to just have one as a snack, right? The the put it on the on the grease paper or the or the you know the uncoated white paper plate and just kind of hunch over while you're walking down the street. It's 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 pretty cool. Yeah, and that's a that's a different you know ball game. Having them on the end, on the the corner, every street corner, every street, multiple on a street. It's like our tacos. Sure. Right. Mm-hmm. So. You know, what's the difference? Be- like, reverse that. Oh, wow. Hey, flying mic. You're you going to literally reverse the mic. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna Flip reverse that. The it's going to make an awesome edit. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of like caught my middle finger, so you might be able to get me flipping you off by accident. Dude, that's perfect. Now just jump right back into what you were saying with the same words, please, and we can just <laughs> snip it right together. <laughs> so, I mean, like, flip that around and now talk about tacos. How would a taco do in New York? The thing is, is Mexican mm. food is not good in New York. No, it's not. I've heard that, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't had good Mexican food in New York. Yeah, I'm sure there's somebody that's crushing it and they would be offended by that statement, oh, sure. Like, it's 2024. People get offended by anything you say. Right. <laughs> but my, my mom's from New York. We grew up in Indiana, Indianapolis. Moved here when I was like five. And instantly, it was like, oh, the Mexican food crushes. This is... Breakfast we, tacos. We had Chi-Chi's in Indiana. And then, if you know anything about Chi-Chi's, that would not compete in this market. It wouldn't. Okay. It's just like not nearly as good. The beans aren't the same. The rice isn't yeah. the same. Like mind-boggling so with respect to that people when i would go to new, to new york and eat pizza as a kid and then fly back to texas i would be like why why don't we have that here i don't understand like it just tastes better in my opinion now i was a kid granted so you know look i think there's an exception to everything right okay. and mm-hmm. you're gonna find probably somewhere in houston that makes a phenomenal slice of pizza somewhere in austin that or in Dripping Springs, in this case. In Dripping Springs. And they say, great slice of pizza. I'm open. This this looks delicious. I mean, mm-hmm. look, this is an A traditional pie, yeah. right? So traditional, it is not. But its bones are traditional. And I think that the answer is emphatically, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as well done as you can. I mean, you're, you're ready for the press. That was great. I mean, you sound like a Texas pizza shop owner for sure. <laughs> look, I, I, I would love, I mean, you're, you're going to hear it first, right? I. I would love to do a Texas pizza festival the way that New York does. Mm. You know, Dave Portnoy just did a big one back there. Um, there's another guy that does them, um, uh, San Francisco, L.A., Chicago. You know, there are great producers. Excuse me. There are great producers here in Texas. I don't believe that where you are dictates what kind of a pizza you're going to create. Where you are dictates what kind of a pizza you might do. Right, sure. so if you open in New York, there's a certain stigma. I have to do this, right? And you open in Texas, there's kind of a stigma which says you have to do that. And for us, it's well, you've got to do a lot of cheese because you know Texans we like cheese. And it's like, okay, I I can do that, but I'm going to give you the option to do that instead of doing that as my product. Mm-hmm. I want my product to be nothing is overwhelming. I don't want the the sauce to overwhelm the cheese and the cheese to overwhelm the the crust and the crust to overwhelm the sauce. Like I want you to be able to taste the nuance of every – somebody asked me, what's your favorite slice? At the end of the day, it's cheese. It was never cheese because I like all sorts of things on pizza. And if you look at my Instagram, I love making the weirdest – we put blueberries on a pizza. Hey. It's cool. I'm into that. It's great. 
But at the end of the day, a cheese slice is going to be the true test of who does a good slice of pizza. Beautiful. Because each each raw ingredient has a chance to sing all on its own without being drowned out by the other ingredients. Right. Beautiful. That was a great rap. I'm, I, I'm great at rapid fire. You're that crushing. It. You're crushing. I mean, the amount of times you've said something that I thought that's going to do incredibly well on social media has been like off the charts. So you're, you're doing amazing. You're built for this. I can't wait for my check. <laughs> <laughs> me, me too. Me too. I can't wait. It's coming. It's coming. Justin, All right, let's see if we can actually do. Should we actually do a rapid fire round? Yeah, I'd like to do five or six just real quick. All right. Yes or no? Are you going to set them up as yes or no questions? No. I was thinking three or four sentences. Oh, Unless so not, it's too okay. nuanced. Right. You can tell That's me fine. it, it would, it's going to take a minute. I just If you wanted to really do a rapid fire, I'd try to play along even though I suck at it. I would, I would have to take word. – I'd have to reword all my questions. <laughs> That's fair. All right. So we're going, we'll, we'll continue. <laughs> but uh, Justin, you got anything you wanted to – I'm sure you've maybe built up a question or two we didn't get a chance to ask. No, I guess what were, you, what were we talking about? We were talking about tacos, talking about New York. I guess, yeah, you were talking about ingredients. Or I guess just like being a, tasting better in New York versus tasting better here. Yeah, the last note on that is just that my parents, my grandparents, they tell me that it's the water, that the water in New York is different hmm. than the water you get in Texas. So when you make the dough, the dough is a different dough than what you get. You'd have to import New York water to Texas to make a pizza here that tasted like New York is what the... That's what the local people of New yep. York have told me. And I don't I've know if that. that's true or not. You know what I'm saying? I don't agree with it. And this is the first time that I'm publicly saying that. Hey. The, re- the reason I don't agree with it is because at the end of the day, there's a softness in their water. Yes. That softness can be replicated. Mm. I mean, it's just it's science. <clears throat> right. So you can filter a water to get as close to or to be that. I mean, there's a company out there selling a water, a New York water softener device for i think five or ten grand and you can make new york water from anywhere minerals though what about the minerals oh i mean that's a that's a that's a different discussion and that's what the new there is say. there is a nuance <laughs> there is a nuance i get it i don't know that's one, that's why i'm one saying day, you, you and i water. you and i are gonna fly to new york Ta- okay? now you're talking. Like, I'm, no joke like we'll do this okay we fly to new york we pick up a slice receiving this and we'll do we'll do we'll do this both ways to be fair right so there we'll take go. a cold slice from here pick your favorite you know new york once you've established what that slice looks like here bring it over there and eat it side to side with one of those right yeah. do the same thing bring it back eat it side to side with one of these i i think you're going to be hard pressed to 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 differentiate the other thing i'm going to say is this is why i think your environment when you're eating Again, there's anticipation, there's buildup, there's excitement. I'm eating in New York. Sight, sound, honking. F you, no F you. Like, mm-hmm. walking here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, there's a whole there's a whole package of, of having that slice of pizza. True. So now, take it and eat it in this room, right? Are you going to feel the same way? No, it's going to be a completely different feeling. Is it going to taste the same? Yes, but is your... Is your body going to be able to understand the difference? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Mm, there we go. Because I think we're so we're such as we're like we're all head cases. <laughs> I'm a head case. We all live but in our all, heads. We're all head, we're all head cases. Head cases. Sure. Like we can think differently just because of where we are. Yeah, it's natural. Big time. Yeah, th- there's definitely Beautiful science answer. to that. Like when you go to a new place, there's like new or more neurons are firing or different neurons are firing because you're like outside of your typical yeah. environment. Yeah. yeah. I also think there's a thing about peak. You know, if you're having a peak pizza gasm, it doesn't matter if it's this pizza or that pizza. Like, if you reach what is the ultimate thing that you're like, oh, this is as good as it gets. Sometimes it's like that feeling alone is what you're saying this pizza tastes delicious about. But if you can achieve that thing in Texas and have that peak moment, you're going to say, oh, this is as good as New York. Correct. It might be hard to say like, oh, I can taste the cheese here is a little less sharp, which isn't melding with the way that the marinade. It's I think it's just you like have to be a, a food. Feeling. You have to be a food critic. Right. And your palate has to be so well trained. Right. And you have to have a stellar memory. Right. For you to be able to pick out that kind of thing. Right. I, I believe. And that, there's plenty of people out there that I truly believe can do that. I think the average person is going to, I think I would struggle with that. And I eat a ton of pizza. I mean, I know it doesn't show, but you know. <laughs> you look great, man. Thank you. I appreciate Kill it. Yeah, man. definitely. Hell I work yeah. really hard. I, every day, right? <laughs> what time do you wake up in the morning? Uh, depends. If I had my way, nine. Yeah. It's usually like seven. Although my wife would say, how many times did you snooze at that, you know? <laughs> sure. You, I woke up at seven. I didn't get out of bed till nine. <laughs> some, of, some of that sleep is the best sleep. That snooze sleep, 
It, it hits different sometimes. <laughs> we go on. I feel like there's something. Maybe not the quality of sleep is different. Maybe it's just like the the control. It's like I'm not getting out of bed yet. Hold the fucking phone. Is bitch. that control? I ain't or going is it the no absence way. of control. I think it's the absence of control. I, well, Justin has true discipline. So from that perspective, I feel like you're like you know what? This is for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tearing this cookie all, off right now. These nine is... minutes are mine. <laughs> but it felt like ninety minutes. Yeah. Right. Sometimes yeah. The, 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 that maybe two nine minutes. Cycles, eighteen minutes. I can feel like an hour. Like, oh, oh, yesterday, just yesterday was, was was the first day that I didn't care about what time I woke up, and I don't remember how many weeks. Wow. And so it was like you know, Monday is normally what industry day. It's not been that way for me. Like you know, starting a restaurant, you're, you're every day you're is an on day. Sundays I can usually kind of etch out some time, but yeah, this was this was yesterday was 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 luxurious in a way, although. Nice. The relativity of of luxury has changed so much. Mm, right? yeah. Luxury used to be like, let's go on vacation. <laughs> yeah, right, let's go on. A <laughs> and cruise. now it's like, hey, I'm gonna wake up and have a coffee in my own house. <laughs> I was gonna say, dude, <laughs> that's luxury. <laughs> have a coffee on my back porch. <laughs> I'm chilling, getting to sit down for a meal. That was luxury for yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Having a private space to eat. That was a luxury yeah. for a little bit. <laughs> I put my kids to bed last night. That was luxury. That's awesome. I haven't right. done that in a while. Nice. Makes me a bad dad. That's nice. Yeah. Now you're working, man. Exactly. You to send him to UT or something like that because he worked real hard. That's a good dad. <laughs> Do you have a favorite college here in Texas? I don't. Did you go to school anywhere? I uh, I've been to school. Same. And I've gone to school uh, at the college level. I didn't graduate. Me neither. I was the guy who, in the middle of you know lectures with my professor, was like uh, Mr. Aram, was that really important? I'm like, yeah, I was about to make money, <laughs> picking up my. Phone. I mean, I was be polite, like try to do it. They would always find you know. Really. Because you were working at the time, or is that yeah, what you're saying? yeah. This was during the time of the ad agency. This was during the time of the well, it was part ad agency, but also with the mortgage business. Because when I worked the ad agency, we also I was also helping my dad, so I get a phone call and it was you know I jump on it. Yeah, but uh, I did love my classes. My brother always says that he had to work hard and I didn't, and I think that's probably part of the reason why I didn't end up finishing is that I, you know, so many things did come, did come easy, um, on the business side, ask me science questions. I hated geometry. Couldn't stand it. You want me to prove side angle side theory? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> look at it. It's even. It's given. Like, like go, go measure it. Like the fuck you want like, from me? It's <laughs> given, dog. That's hard. Like you got to. You can't use the proof to prove. That. All right, you know, like fine. But you know, uh, business law loved it. Same. Well, I, I love that, that class. Yep. This one professor, I I will try to find. His did you name. go to Texas State? I did not. Oh, okay, I did not. That was really but helpful. I had this. I had this one professor in Washington State, and uh, at a community college, really high level stuff. And uh, and I just absolutely loved the class. It was business law. You'd read the cases, and then you have to argue the cases. But I found it more challenging to not read the cases <laughs> and argue the cases. There we go. It was a lot of fun, especially the the, the after part. You know, like how did you get how how did you get an A on that? <laughs> you just told me you didn't read it. I'm like, yeah, but I mean, like half of these guys are BSing all the time. Like I got to be able to figure it out from now, right? Yeah. So it was it was, it was fun. I'm an example of how to not be a student. No, it's just there's sometimes if you're lucky enough to find something that you're good at, you don't, people are studying to be good at something. But if you're good at something and you're able to make a living or career out of it, that's pretty awesome. You know, I think we all aspire to do that anyways. I think I aspire to be a podcaster. This is the most fun I've had in a long time. I know, dude. We're, but we're, obviously, <laughs> I get high on my own voice, which so it's terrible. It's fun to get to the- I love it. Travel down these <laughs> I ideas. Love it. Yeah, we can just open it up. Are you, are you trying to, I guess, are you a proponent for like your kids to go to college or how do you feel about that? <sighs> We're getting deep. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think if I had to say no, it would be no. Right. That, that didn't really make sense. If you had to say, if no. I had to say, I'd say no. Me too. I'm and the reason, problem. the reason Savages. I say no is because I feel like too many kids. So let's let's assume for a second that parents do a good job raising their kids, and some do. And let's assume that I'm doing a good job, which I I hope I am. Right. And time will only tell. So if we're assuming all these all these things, that kid going into school is, you know, on this rise, hasn't hit their crescendo yet, but they're on this rise, right? They're getting smarter. Mm -hmm. They're learning more. They're building experience. I just see college ruining that. Hmm. In so many cases with friends, friend, friends, kids, and friends of friends, and seeing these kids grow up, and then all of a sudden... 
you know, having these conversations with them and then they go to school. And I'm not here to say that all of education is bad. Truly not. There's, there's, I think, a lot of redeeming qualities even today. But there's so much of this like, well, I, I learned how to think, but I learned how to think differently. Hmm. Whereas maybe the dad was a business owner and taught them how to think based off of that. And now they're going and they're, they're learning something else. But they're losing work ethic. They're coming out. Like how many people do we know coming out of school in half a million, quarter million in debt? What do they have to show for it, and what kind of jobs are they getting? There's plenty of people that we know that did okay, or you know, but there's I think an overwhelming portion out there that they're coming out of school and they're like, "Give me the job," right? But they're not getting they're not getting the job. That is tough. Yeah, sometimes they're not even getting jobs related to their degree, like at all. You know, they'll, they'll go through college and then get the degree and then get a job in like a different field. Oh, I, I hired a I hired a, a um. I hired a gal at the mortgage business that, that, that we were running and super, super cool, like smart, but her, her major was philosophy and archaeology. Okay. Philosophy and archaeology. Philosophy oh. stands out. I love those classes. Find some fossils. And I'm like, I'm like, so why, why did you apply at a mortgage company? Yeah. Right. Well, Cause I can't, <laughs> I can't get a job that I like. No one's hiring. And this field. was like what well, this was what five years, ten years ago? Ten years ago. No one was hiring. I didn't like that like they were they didn't pay very much. It's like it's as bad as getting a communication degree. <laughs> like, you right. know, like what did you study? You studied things that people don't want to hire you for. It's right. tough. Some intangibles. Yeah. <laughs> it's like abstract thought. <laughs> right. Like no, I don't me. want abstract. I want you to think this is what how I want you to think. Why? Sell it. <laughs> Just sell it. <laughs> but why? <laughs> It's like too, Gollum too much, over here. Too much philosophy. <laughs> I'm too with much you philosophy. Though. Dude, I have to come up with philosophy to get through anything. If, if we're selling lies all day long, I don't want to work there. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about selling lies. Mm. I'm just like sell the product or read the script or follow the this. Can you or, make me believe in it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, I can make you believe in it. <laughs> Absolutely. We can, we can do Philosophically, business. yes. There we go. Yeah, you got to stand behind the service you know, or I, your product look, whatever. I, I say this all the time, and I get into arguments with people all the time. I'm like, I won't sell it if I don't believe in it. Like, yeah, you will. No, no, no. I can't. I can't. And I won't. I can't. Yeah. Yes, you can. Okay. All right. Sure. Gun to my head. Sure. <laughs> if I didn't care, yeah. But we've already established that I want to do the right thing, right? right. So now I've already I've already typecasted myself into that role where I can't sell something if I don't believe in it. Feels wrong. It feels wrong. Yeah. And you'd probably do better work when your heart's in it. You want to know one of the biggest things that I sold as a mortgage broker was was the reverse mortgage. Oh, I wow. love the reverse mortgage. Enlighten me. I'm not In sure what that is. In love with the reverse mortgage. You have senior citizens who have supported their home all these years, right? They've made their payments on time, many of them never missing a payment. Mm -hmm. And they've put their kids through school, and they've done this, and they've done that. And now they're in their golden years, right? They're in their 70s. They're maybe even more – they could be older than that. And now that home is worth so much, right? They've had it for 10 years. They've had it for 20 years, if, some of them longer. Mm -hmm. And they can't really support their lifestyle as much. Their cost of living has gone up. Social Security is not paying out as much as they thought. Um, maybe they got Social Security right when they were when, right when they could, so they like they're not getting as much as they really you know should. Uh, the cost of gas, cost of living, the home needs repairs. They want to see their grandkids. They're traveling. Oops, we're running out of money. So you use a reverse mortgage to pull equity out of the home to fund the remainder of, of, of that retirement, right? It's like an instant, I can fix my retirement trajectory. Hmm. So there's so many, you know, people like out there, oh, there's negative this, negative that. Sure. Can it, can it not be the right thing? It, it definitely can be. Is my pizza not going to taste great to everybody? It, it, it might not, right? But I can tell you going in what the quality is, and I can tell you going into a reverse mortgage what the quality is. So if you remove the bad actors, if you remove the people that are being sold when they shouldn't be, like, I'm going to sell my home in six months. Well, then you shouldn't do a reverse mortgage. Or, you know, I want this home to go to my kids. Well, okay, ha can your kid afford to make a payment afterwards? No. They're like, let's stop. Let's not try to force you to do it. Let's stop and, and pull back and figure out. But if it works, like, hey, I'd, my kids are, they've got a $300,000 a year job. 
and they're taking care of themselves and they just, they're willing to take care of me, but I don't want them to take care of me. And I don't care what happens to my home when I'm gone. I just want to make sure that I can be here and be there for the special moments and take care of my husband or take care of my, my wife or whatever. Reverse mortgage looks pretty good. Never have to make a mortgage payment again. The home value is going to continue to grow, usually, nine out of 10 times. The loan amount is going to continue to grow. But at the end of the day, I don't have to make a payment because the loan amount is, is growing. I'm not making a payment. It's happening in reverse. It works pretty well. But so many people are like, I'm not going to do it. I can't sell. I can't. Anything that's going to scam a senior, I can't sell. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm. It's it's not as it's you're not scamming a senior. You're sharing with them a tool. Does that tool work for them? Yes or no? Yeah. Do they want that tool? Yes or no? If they do, it's a it can be an amazing tool. Well, if that tool is heroin, maybe not. If the what? <laughs> if the tool is heroin. <laughs> See what I'm saying though? So are they well, putting... back in the twenties, it might not have been. <laughs> <laughs> they put it in Coca Cola, didn't they? Or is that, yeah. that was cocaine? Never mind. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but is over the counter. Are we? Uh, in, <laughs> do these people plan on eventually? They got to pay a payment, right? No, on the reverse Unle- mortgage. Unless they sell. Unless they sell. So if they sell, then they have to pay off the loan, whatever the home value sells for, less the the the, the right. loan amount. Right. And if. The loan balance has grown so much when they sell that their home is upside down because they're getting, in most cases, not, uh, uh, an FHA, Federal Housing Administration, backed loan. Well, now they don't owe the difference between that shortfall. So they kind of wash their hands and walk away. Sounds like a way to crash land your paid off mortgage that gives you more money for time. But like if you sold the house and it was paid off, you'd make way more money, but you'd have to live somewhere else. But where are you going to live? Exactly. You could get an apartment, but then people don't want to move into an apartment. Not everybody wants. There's a common misnomer that not everybody like people are like. Well, well, you're going to have to downsize when you get older. Like not everybody wants to downsize. Right. So there's a lot of people out there, myself included, that that liked using the phrase right sizing. So it's like I want to, I want to right size. Sometimes that means moving into a bigger home. Sometimes it moves into the same home sometimes it just means hey i'm going to stay here and make this home more enjoyable to me yeah sounds like the right strategy for the right person yeah the right moment yeah, but mm-hmm. it's not a one size fits all right. right and so that's the thing you can throw the baby out with the bathwater and just be like yes it works for everybody or it doesn't work for everybody. anytime you hear absolutes mm. that's when you got to be careful i believe in that yeah, but when you so. understand that there's nuance with with everything it's like like this is this can be a great product and it can be terrible. War can be good. Right. It's always going to be terrible in a way because yeah. there's always going to be loss of life. But there's there could be something positive that comes from this. But at the same time, context is everything. Context is everything. Yeah, I'm with you. That's beautiful. Heck yeah. Kids going to school. Yeah, I guess I was just going to ask. Get, get back to pizza talk before we <laughs> before we round out. Yeah, stop talking about well, what <laughs> dummy. Before we get into war talk, yeah, war talk, <laughs> heroin talk. <laughs> good God, <laughs> what is Drugs it pie. good for? Absolutely. <laughs> what What makes a good pie? What makes a good pizza? Not pie, but a, a pie. What makes a good one? All right. Well, I mean, we've got the basics: flour, water, salt, yeast. Right. Oh. I think that the longer the fermentation, the better that crust is going to be and the fermentation is going on with the dough that's going on in the dough i am uh now if if i could do this on my own just for fun i'd go sourdough because i I just i love the sourdough but the problem with sourdough is it's so freaking alive Mm. (laughs) and it's hard to it's it's so much harder to commercialize we could do it we have to raise prices big time in order to do that but aside from going sourdough you do a longer ferment for us 48 hours right i love my pizza at about four days. That four day dough is just so, so amazing. Mm-hmm. From a commercial standpoint, 48 is the minimum I'm happy with. Longer can be even more exciting. Got it. What's happening? You're lowering the glycemic index in that dough. Okay. So it's actually fermenting and it is processing out a lot of that sugar, a lot of the things like, you know, it's not fermenting in your gut the same way that a, you know, dough that was made 12 hours ago does mm-hmm. or 10 hours ago or this morning. And so I think that that's what makes, to me, start with the, the crust. 
you know, we say trust the crust because I really do believe that it's it's that's that's the first thing. That first thing that touches your tongue is a crust. The, yeah, the base, the foundation. It's got to be there. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, start there. And then what's your sauce? I, I want the cleanest sauce possible. I don't want a bunch of stuff in it. That's where I love the Napolitana style, right? Mm-hmm. Pizza from Napoli, that, that area of, of, of Italy, traditionally is just straight... Um, straight San Marzano tomato, milled, you know, skin or no skin, seed or no seed, but it's just Tomatoes. somebody, somebody with their hand usually broken apart. Wow, that's great. I mean, it's just it, there's a beauty, there's a sweetness, there's like there's a there's a salinity, there's a brightness that's that's happening there. It's just it's lovely, and there's usually nothing in that. Maybe a little salt, maybe a little basil, and then olive oil on top. So one of my favorite pizzas, aside from, you know, just judging a pizza for its cheese and sauce, is a tomato pie. Wow. So just sauce straight on the on the crust. A little bit of olive oil. It's fantastic. If you're going to go cheese, which many of us do, a really good high, high butter, uh, uh, butter fat mozzarella. Hmm. Low moisture, um, whole milk mozzarella. I am a Midwest fan. I like the cows that have to pack on more weight to survive the winter. What's a classic cow? Yeah, there's a there's a yeah, exactly. And there's a there's a kind of this comment that, well, the Midwest cheese is not as consistent as the West Coast cheese, because the California cows they don't have to do that, right? Happy They're cows. not yeah, happy mm. cows come from California. That's <laughs> yeah. great marketing, by the way, right? Some and I'm not, that. I'm not saying that they're bad or like I just my thing. I like Wisconsin. I like Midwest. I like that type, that flavor profile. Cheeseheads, yeah. There's a right. reason yeah. that they're. Don't you know? You know? Yeah. There's something to that. <laughs> the cheeseheads. Yeah. You got a powerful cheese culture over yeah. there. Where, where, where do the roots of that cheese culture lie? I you think ever had it's cheese curds? Behind good cheese. You ever had cheese curds? I don't think so. Oh man, are they good? So oh, yeah. What, what, squeak, what is a they curd? They squeak when they're so fresh. There's a, there's it's like a like, little ball of cheese? Yeah. Yeah. Cheese curd. Just is it? A little, little, little nugget. So if I took a scoop out of a cheese wheel, I could call it a curd? No. Okay. Well, where's the difference? <laughs> uh, we're getting a little deep for my stupid brain. <laughs> um, but a cheese a cheese curd is, is usually the product that's before the, the final finished you know, uh, cheese. Curds so and whey. Like curds and whey. So as they're separating it you know, in the vat, right, th- th- those are the little things that usually are floating to the to the top mm. huh. and the fresher they are the more they squeak so and i so when i say squeak it's when you when you bite on them with your teeth wow. and you can actually hear them squeak hear your teeth squeak against the, the yeah it's it's hilarious <laughs> yeah kind of like that yeah just keep doing that <laughs> sounds like, sounds like teeth. <laughs> that's quality cheese yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's quality curd yeah that's Hold what on, it, colonel probably has something to do with why mice like it so good curd <laughs> yeah, no. oh nice there's something there no, but so uh, poutine. Have you ever had poutine? Mm, that's French cheese on it's, sauce on fries. Yeah, there you go. Right, yeah, go. fries and yeah. stuff. It's in Canada. It, yep. It, that's one of life's simple pleasures. Really? Oh, yeah. Like, it's terrible for you. Haven't had it. It's just gravy <laughs> on fries. But they make usually really nice hand-cut Kennebec potato fries. Mm-hmm. And then, like, cheese curds. Oh. Fresh uh-huh. cheese curds. Brown gravy, and in my case, lots of pepper. Let's do that after we do the New York taste test. Hey, we could hit them up on the way back. Yeah. <laughs> Talk my language. <laughs> All right, Mr. Dar, what is, what's the next, what's what's uh, on the docket for the next six to 18 months? Well, obviously to be on the podcast again. I mean, like Come that, on. we have to do that. Bring it back. This is awesome, right? Doesn't it hurt when we feel like it's starting to be over? It's yeah, like, I can tell. Like, it makes me sad, I can dude. feel the cane pulling me off the set. No, you're you know? good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad. I'm sad. I hate it. I, I wish we could keep going. Every what time. are we doing after this? <laughs> <laughs> Editing, so, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the goal is location two. Okay. The nice. goal is location too. Where I guess what's what's the potential? Locations? Well, when we started, it was like let's let's head towards the hills. Let's keep it in B Cave. You know, yeah. Uh, I, B Cave is right up there with me. Like B Cave, Buda, you know, San Marcos, um, Kyle, you know, Austin. More out this way. I I'd like to go to San Antonio too. Uh, right a- now, I'm already there. So I live 
in between i live on uh, in the hill country in between um in between here and there perfect <laughs> nice well I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in blanco blanco county okay so um i could easily from my home go to e- either metro but with a location already in dripping springs the natural next step would be to be somewhere else by there um i really like buta I think Buda is, is a is a really growing spot, big time. Um, and it's only thirty something minutes, thirty seven minutes from the current location. Bee Caves is even bigger, so there's an idea as well. But that's the the biggest goal is to get location to increase our our third party, um, not third party, but like our wholesale business, like you know how we met, um, trying to produce uh, dough and pizza and par bakes for. The restaurant industry, you know, for bars and and distilleries. Um, so I, I'd like to see more of that, and I'd, I'd like to I'd like to see catering increase as well. Nice, hell yeah! So that'd be tight. Every next event exactly. catered, right? Yeah, be right. awesome. Company parties. I got to get rid of that Corolla that I'm driving around <laughs> and upgrade it to a van or something. Let's go. I've got one final question. Why this pizza? Why? Specific this one? No. Why I brought it? <laughs> but your product. Oh, why should you buy my pizza? Yeah, why? Why, why your product? Uh, I think there's very few places that take the time to find flour that is non-GMO. I think the GMOs are a lot of what we're struggling with in society today. Why people can't process, you know, wheat? Why they can't? Why they're mostly, you know, gluten free or gluten intolerant? Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's very few places that are doing their best to avoid seed oils. Mm. Um, that's a goal of mine. Is it perfect? No, I'm very honest about that. Sometimes you're going to find it, but like we try with everything we can. Instead of using the blend, the oil blend, we're using real olive oil in our dough. Uh, instead of using Crisco, like is traditional for a Detroit, we use real butter in the Detroit. So to me. It's it's a product that is as artisanal in nature as it can be while still trying to be made fast. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's very cliche to say because we care. There's plenty of other people that care. Tell me how much you care, man. <laughs> it's it's it, there's so many people on my same block and around the corner that care just as much, maybe. Yeah. But I I care in a different way. I I care to produce the best quality product that I am comfortable bringing home to my kids. That's that's how I look at it. Will I let my kid have? There are so many people who will feed their kids things just because of time and efficiency and dollars. And we're there too. Like I mean, we'll we'll go to the fast food you know chains, mm-hmm. but we're always going to feel guilty about it. Mm-hmm. At least that's how I'm programmed. Yeah, me too. Sure. Yeah, fast food hurts. So I don't want to feel guilty about this. I'm going to feel guilty about the calories. That's there. I'm going to feel guilty about, you know, maybe how many slices I'm having. There we go. <laughs> hmm. But I'm not going to feel guilty because I know that the ingredients that I'm putting in down to the water, down to the yeast, down to whatever is, it's good stuff. And so for me, the story of how we're producing really, truly artisanal style pizza in a fast food kitchen is, I think, a big part of the why. And at the end of the day, it competes with, it, it hits out of its class in both, you know, price and in and in quality. And I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a modern. It's what people want. It's what someone's asking for. I think they want the seed oils. I mean, that's a, kind of a new thing in the last few years where people are really trying to like watch out for that more and more and more. So like to be having an eye on that, to having a pulse on what people are looking for, and to be doing it at a price point where you feel like. You are reaching families and still competing with. I mean, what's the what's the most expensive, most high end pizza? I feel like you're you're competing with those markets too, you know. Yeah. And that's awesome, man. That's really awesome. Yeah. I believe in your product. I believe in you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, bro. Absolutely. It's been so much fun. Thank you for coming out. One yeah. more time, yeah. Plug in. Pl- plug the name. Plug the in, the socials. Where where you at? What what is called? How do we Slice, find you? Slice Street Pizza. SliceStreetPizza.com, dot com at Slice Street Pizza online, Instagram, Facebook, X. Yeah, you say slice TikTok. or sliced? Slice. Just S- one slice. S L I C E. Slice pizza. Slice street pizza. Street pizza. Slice street pizza. Let's go. Catch man. him on the Instagram. Catch him in real life. It's even better. Yeah, come by the shop anytime. But uh, yeah, th- this has been fun. You guys come and visit. Maybe the next one we'll do a remote. Yeah, we can do mobiles. We'll, oh yeah, we'll, we do remote we'll, too. We'll have yeah. the we'll have the the pizza going in the back, and that way you can have it hot. 
That'd be crazy. I hear you. Yeah. That'd be tight. Don't have a mobile oven yet. That'd what be tight. No worries. No worries. We have a mobile <laughs> studio, so we're locked in for it. Yes, bro. Oh, yeah, man. All right. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Appreciate Steve. you coming out. Appreciate you guys. Ending up wrapping 63. We'll catch y'all on the flip. See you next time. Peace. Rolling through the city to the light show. Really ain't no telling where we might.